go out downhill live in front All of I'm people. All I'm just saying is my shot is only ever from like shoulders up. So I don't know why it's such a big deal if I'm, uh, you know. It, it's the principle of the thing, okay, buddy? Okay, it's I put the, the pants on. I don't yeah, know no, why I, you're so upset. I don't mind about... if it's pajama pants. I don't it's mind summer. if it's, you it's know, golf hot. pants, whatever. <laughs> it is hot, actually. It's been crazy hot. <laughs> I was yeah. standing in this shade this afternoon, like around 1.30. Mm -hmm. In the shade, I was sweating. This is how bad it was. I was trying to stay away <laughs> from the sun. It was just, it's crazy. We're going through this. I, like and, two days ago, uh, we had like perfect, it was a little muggy, but it was like, it was like 80 degrees. It was yeah, hot, yeah. but it was like yeah. good hot. I, I and now that. it's just like, oh my God, I can't go outside. It was like humidity, scrap that. Next, let's go. Let's just go scalding oh. hot. It was uh, 103 oh. for us the most today. Yesterday was 102. I, oh, we didn't we didn't break 100. I mean, let me let me. Just well, you're you're check. closer to the coast. That's the thing. So for you, you get but, a little but, bit more breeze, right? Well, we 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 typically aren't as hot as you, but we're a bit more humid, and so we yeah. were we were 80. I think we had a high of like 88 or something like that. What? It was, maybe what? it was a little hotter. That, that that's not hot. That's that's acceptable. Yeah. That's like a good it, day it, on a I, don't know, I mean 88 but more humid isn't I'd, I'd much well, rather be like uh, 90 and dry. Uh, okay. I uh, you I know, come we'll, from New Mexico. We'll, we'll, we're, we'll, we're we'll agree to split atoms on that people. one. Yeah. No, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. 80, 80 <laughs> I remember going to Florida and um Florida weather is hum like humidity oh, at the next level. Oh, Florida is the worst. Have I I've ever like rambled on about my experiences as a former dancer? Dancer? No, please. Okay, tell. yeah. So, so I almost like I almost minored in dance in college, uh, folklorico and flamenco mostly. But then I also toured with a step team. I Short story, incredibly this. long. I used to my, dance my... flamenco in uh, elementary, or nice. not elementary, uh, like junior high. Yeah, uh, for sure. It, it was no, it's, uh, it's performing great. arts. And and oh, again, if, when yeah. you're young and you can handle those golpes and plantas as you like <laughs> ram your feet into the ground as hard as you can. Oh, um, yes. The, there, oh, there's God. definitely a, a reason why you don't. The, the lifespan of a good flamenco performer is, is kind of limited. Um, <laughs> but I, I miss the. I remember. I remember the beat. Oh, my but God. My, they my, that in my head. But yes, yeah, my favorite flamenco dancer, uh, flamenco teacher, um, I was say she dancer used to do yeah. hot, um, hot rehearsals. So it would be the middle of summer in New uh -huh. Mexico, and she uh -huh. would turn the heater on. In what? the studio, so that you it was broiling sauna, because then if you, got, if you got used to flamenco in absurdly hot conditions, then when you were on stage, you, you wouldn't sweat under the lights like it was it was cake. Oh, to perform. okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah, you yeah. would you would like, and when you knew like your rehearsal time was coming up, you'd wait outside and they would open the door, and it was like a fog of human sweat that you would have to like push through <laughs> to get into the studio. And oh. that is very much like Florida. <laughs> like so all the time. I, I, Florida I, is just the sweaty armpit of the United States. Well, no, but summer. not only that. So for, and for people that wear glasses, Florida is a very rude shock awakening. The moment you walk out of the airport, the moment you walk into the regular weather where it's not dehumidified with mm -hmm. the air conditioning system, sure. there's the fog on the glass, your glasses oh, fog instantly. up and, and you feel yeah. like you just went blind for some reason. And, and again, I come time. from a place like in New Mexico. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, it's not like California is lush no, and no. tropical. But even no, by I mean, like New Mexico standards, yeah. California is a little humid. I, you know, like you would work out hard in New Mexico and then just stop. And a couple minutes later, you were totally dry. You know, like you, you like everything had evaporated off of you, you know, like just the moisture is just leached off of you immediately. That's... Um, and, and, and like I, I couldn't go out for runs in Florida because mm -hmm. it's like I'd need four pairs of shoes because if I soak a pair of shoes, it's going to be days before, before you're they're able dry. To get to dry. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah no, and I can wear no, them no. again. So anyway, uh, everybody, welcome to Best yeah. of Our Week. <laughs> Where we actually talk about the, you know the cool stuff we've done during the week, mostly cool. focused on technology, but occasionally uh, we got to talk Florida and humidity <laughs> yeah. and and weather and stuff like that. So things it's like that, great. things of that sort. So, yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been a I, I want to say an interesting week, but it's uh, it's been a weird. It's last week or so. It's been interesting. Me, my relationship with mm -hmm. YouTube has been. Um, I would say challenging to it would be the best situation, oh, the best way to yeah. describe it. 
um, I'm not producing content that YouTube likes, or at least doesn't think people like. And um, so, yeah, yeah, I've been, <laughs> but I'm, you know what? No, I'm clearing, I, I, I'm clearing that, things. I need, it's move. tough. It is. So here, here's what's frustrating is like, I, I feel like this is a part of the narrative where content yeah. creators start complaining about how boring things are over the summer. But the demographics of people that watch YouTube videos is changing, work from home situations are changing, that's true. school yeah, yeah, that's and a big day change. camps. You know, it, we're, we're altering people's schedules. And again, if YouTube were a good facilitator, you know, really managing the relationship between a content creator and their audience, we would see demographics shift but not disappear. Mm -hmm. But instead, it seems like during the summer, YouTube gets even more brutal about their ad spends, about their, excuse me, their ad buys, I should say, mm -hmm. um, and the partners that they're working with. We know that there's like a summer doldrum, so the, the weight on our content gets devalued mm -hmm. until, I mean, we're leading up into Father's Day, and then once Father's Day is gone, it's like, well, let's wait till back to school, and I guess nothing happens in between then. But now would be the perfect time to double down on different times, you know, sending out alerts at different times, getting people interested in other conversations on yep. other topics. This exactly. is the perfect time to follow up. Hey, man, did you buy a phone in February? How is it aging? Let's talk about it now, you know, four months later. Now's the perfect time to pick stuff back up. Yeah, yeah. And for those of us who are into tech, we understand that conversation. To me, summer is the perfect time to kind of like get my bearings, reset, cover some other things. I want to get back to my schedule. Like um, I'm, I'm, I was planning on once a month that's already fallen apart, but you know, mm -hmm. like the disaster prep tech, I've got some giant yes. solar yeah, panels yeah, yeah. I that remember I want to that talk one. Yeah, about. Yeah. We, well, and, we and, both and got a chance to cover that, that massive um, anchor battery, which the is anchor, really, definitely right. you know, yeah, preparing I, this disaster. I had another person leave a comment on that, like, well, I mean, a gas, a gas power generator is going to be preferable because you just pour gas in it. And you're like, I don't know about you, but how are you taking care of your gas generator? Are, are you giving it oil changes? Are you giving it regular maintenance? Can you just exactly. count on it in a pinch? If we have earthquakes here and our infrastructure's, you know, affected in a significant way, can you just go to the local gas station and get gas to run your generator? Because right now I've got some big honking solar panels and that'll charge the anchor. Oh, did, did you did you and pick then, up the uh, the anchor ones or did you uh, which no, ones? No, so they weren't they they weren't they're still not technically ready to be sold on their own. So they're sold okay. in a kit with mm -hmm. the battery and you know, I have the battery. Um, so instead it's, um, I, I got, I think they're called, uh, Dokios or Dokios. I can't remember, okay. but it's one giant flexible panel, 300 watt max, but your realistic power outputs probably closer to like two, 200, 180 with suboptimal lighting. Like if you don't get mm -hmm. the angle on them just right, but that's still really good power input to, to start topping off that battery. I like so, it. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I, that's what I'm planning that next video on is like, they weren't that expensive. Mm -hmm. They are harder to use because they're not as rigid as good travel, like mm -hmm. hundred watt solar panels. Yeah. But, um, you know, like I'm not using them to really go hiking. I'm using them that like, when I expect we'll have some more rolling blackouts here in Southern California, <laughs> when everybody's air conditioners well, are running so I, hard, I'm, 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 that will be able it to looks power like stuff here. This the if, if if we continue on the path that we're in right now with the with the weather and the way it's going yeah it's going to be horrible it, it's going to be absolutely horrendously horrible uh, in, in the next few months um we're in june but we are getting 100 plus and at least here for me i typically don't see that till like july or so so mm -hmm. yeah um come to think about it i never see uh the x months uh oh type of months later videos from popular sponsored channels uh no yeah typically they've moved on they they don't i mean you may see once in a while, but it'll be coverage on the phone that the sponsorship was done in the beginning. And it may be just a follow up sponsorship that we just, you know, see it in a different way. Um, but but that also that was a comment from Farhan and we've been getting have, some great chat coming in. Uh, Michael Pepper Tech saying, hey, hey, man, uh, hope Mark you guys are Riley. Doing... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Gregory all Barry Johnson. Definitely. The Hawks. Yeah. Uh, I'm, who is it? Ron Guido. Who else am I missing? Mark, oh, you got Mark Riley in there. Oh, Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian, Sebastian Lobos. Lobo. Michael Pepper Tech fronting the Vivo gang. Hashtag Vivo gang. We, yeah, I'm seeing a lot, gonna start people, a lot of people. A lot of people are starting. Holding up our Vivos. 
well, not only that, I'm seeing the Vivo Flex uh, flexing its its uh, its way mm -hmm. around on on a few channel, which I'm really excited to see that. Um, I haven't seen the the Flex, but I from what it looks like, and everybody's excited about it. I'm happy. Um, I still like my Find N. I like the N. It's nice. It's petite. It's it's pocketable, foldable experience and i feel like it's uh it actually does have somewhat of a one-handed experience on the outside and then of course you flip it inside and you're getting much better ergonomics so i'm, I'm happy with that and uh mm -hmm. you know the x80 pro as you as you and everybody um that, that's been championing that one is also looking really nice um i've been looking so swapa has one x70 <laughs> pro plus and this okay. is like and 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 i've so, been like so trying to TK, hit yeah you know, i'm i'm just gonna spoil this on the show right now Sure. We're, we're just we're just, we're just going to air it. <laughs> uh, the end of last year, I got the X70 Pro and the X70 Pro Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a not insignificant chunk of my X80 Pro coverage was shot on the X70 Pro Plus. Just, Absolutely, they're the direct comparable. But I needed another just like 4K 60 frame per second camera, and wouldn't you know it, that one's really good. <laughs> so, in, in the interest of of like you know fleshing out our our little band of of gadget misfits and broken yep. toys. Um, the X70 Pro Plus was just packed into a box to send out to our buddy Bionic Scoop. Because Bionic Scoop is a flippin' phenomenal photographer, and he's in Vegas, okay. and he's gonna spend, I don't know, two weeks with it? Because oh, he just really be wanted to see what that sensor could do. So the and 4th of then, July, it'll be nice. Then, I feel it should just go directly to a new permanent home where you could really use it since I have the X80 Pro. I would So if you can uh, yeah. hold on for a couple weeks just to knock you off of your Swappa obsession. No, I mean did, did rather, rather than trying to buy an often. import. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Nope. And, yeah, oh, yeah. it won't. So instead of trying to lock one, if you can just pump the brakes. Then, then it'll be in your hands where I oh feel you, you, you will be giving it an excellent home, you, you, especially someone who will appreciate what that thing can do because you've already leaned on it for real I, work. I really, so it, it will be coming your way. I just so the problem is your you fault. You know that. You know it's your fault. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm it, sending it, 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 it to it, you. It started, I feel bad. I left you, you started in the me lurch. off in the beginning of the year. I go to Vegas and I'm like, I'm, I'm really setting my expectations. Like, okay, this should be an okay phone. Everything is fine. <laughs> and I end up being using it as over every other, yeah. every other thing, even my own, even the, the, uh, what's it called? The a seven four that I had on loan from Sony mm -hmm. that was overshadowing that. So that, that that's the only reason why I'm still very much so interested. I, I totally get it. So I, I'm, no, just, I'm, I'm just saying if you can wait two no, weeks, I, I, ab absolutely. Absolutely. I, then it, I, for then me, it was more, Let's, let's. I just don't want you to. I'm glad you mentioned. It. I didn't want you to pull the trigger on something. You'd be like, "Hey, man, I bought this X70 Pro Plus." And you're like, "Oh." I, I, I think no, no. So I found. So the reason why I was saying it's uh, this time. Th uh, this time around, the uh, the gentleman was willing to go down to 780 for a brand new one with. That's not bad. Um, with the cases, I guess, and the buds and everything. So he's including all the entire package that came in the box or whatever. I guess he didn't yeah. like it, and it and it his did work on T-Mobile and so on. But for me, yeah, it's been it, more the, the the LTE support is pretty good. Oh like no no in yeah my neighborhood yeah and I think I should be able to it, for the most part excuse me most most Chinese phones I mean Oppo's well, not OnePlus's but like Oppo's Xiaomi's and stuff like that mm -hmm. that's typically what I get I get 4G LTE I don't get 5G and even if I even if I see the word 5G on some uh, it's not true 5G I feel like it's like the just the moniker shows up because you know T-Mobile for some reason checks the box or something like that but yeah no I appreciate that that I think if that works with you um we could try to work out a, some type of a trade I feel like this is something that also be a good opportunity for us to maybe I'm sure you maybe have get you uh the other side a nice of BBK, phone maybe. from last year that, <laughs> that I could would... take off your hands for a bit um I, I, I again think... the 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 reason why any like I'm not trying to you know be all like you know sort of gracious and magnanimous about this um you know I, I definitely agonize about what I do with a lot of my review devices try to send mm -hmm. them back to the manufacturer find fun ways to give them away but more more and more it's like really I just want to see them go to a good home you know yeah. you you have already you know sort of played with a vivo and you you definitely have leaned on a vivo and in, in a way where it's not like, you know what I mean? Like you get so much of that coverage where it's like, I'm, I'm picking Samsung for my next phone next year. And that's what I'm really, and you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, no, no one's really surprised by that. 
but when you really need to lean on a product, and it's why I became such a big fan of LG, um, you know, there were oftentimes like straight up camera performance in auto mode or in video mode, and other phone could beat it. But like, mm -hmm. man, nothing nothing touched those audio tools. Yep. And like, if I'm really gonna make good content out on the go, and especially starting from like the V30 on, it was like, man, I need this so that I can really accomplish what I'm doing. I'm not just picking LG to be a contrarian. You're not just interested in an X70 Pro Plus because like, oh, it's something a little different. You know, no, no, yeah. it, it genuinely does a certain part of our job in a way that few other phones directly compare. Oh, absolutely. so again, yeah. with me, you know, kicking it with the X80 Pro, I feel I'm good. <laughs> so if I, I have I, this X70 Pro Plus kicking around, and I know a buddy who's a really good photographer, and he's going to take it for a spin. And then I have another friend who's really good at the mobile content game. And I, I feel like I've, I've given this phone some, some friendly family to, to experience it. To, to and I, and I feel it. like it would be a good, it, it'll be a good opportunity for, for us to also kind of maybe get you on the other side. Cause I feel like one thing that we've, we've worked very well is the BBK clan, right? I mean, we covered only <laughs> between the two of us, we covered all of BBK. For sure. Uh, but one thing we haven't had a chance to get you playing with it, it for some time now is a little bit of Oppo. So I'm thinking yeah. since we're doing best of 2021, you know, BBK Vivo slash Oppo, I think the Find X3 Pro would be a good, a good because uh, I still yeah. use the Find X5 Pro because we don't have a four. So I think the three right. would definitely be a nice. Um, well, and, and again, I feel like that would be a fun swap. I mean, not like for us to do like a, one of our old school phone trade challenges. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, you know, again, it's it's BBK parts been mm -hmm. very different very. Um, aesthetics where oh. Vivo mm -hmm. is like the bleeding has become the bleeding edge photography. Um, like traditional photography market. Yeah, for no, absolutely. BBK. The Oppo is like their experimental, experimental tier. Yeah. So that one is the one other... that has the microscope lens. So that's yes. the, that's where the photography kind of changes. This year, the 5 didn't have that. And Realme got that one on their uh, GT2 Pro. So it's kind yeah. of a weird, like, you know, like it's interesting. But so I feel like the Find X3 Pro could do uh, could, do, could do really nice for you and could be very functional. I don't think it outperforms yeah, a Vivo. I don't think it'll, it, I don't think I'm going to be able to win you over there, but I feel like still getting into that and checking that out and seeing how that works. I think no, I, I, I think, you know what, you I mean, we, we, we put it out there. I think that would be a fun trade and especially yeah. one for us to kind of like track on the podcast, just like, Oh, absolutely. I, I, I already know how I feel. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> let, let, let me, wait, where's my video? No, I was going to say, I can pull, I'll bring for back sure. footage from, uh, <laughs> I have, I have stock footage here from uh, early January. So I'm, I'm good, but, uh, so yeah. I think it would be good. I, I appreciate that part, and um, I think it'll be a good, comp good exchange. But I also feel like it, both of us will get a chance to benefit from it. For me, again, yeah. the the photography part of it, uh, mobile connectivity is great. But I think it's most what I'm interested in most is the cameras, the microphones, the performance. That's really what what I'm looking for to get right. back. That's so Michael Pepper Tech just just ended our podcast. I mean, I feel like there's nothing we can say that'll top. Scoop is going to Vivo Las Vegas. Vegas. That's, awesome. That's awesome. So uh, show's over. Uh, everybody Lucky subscribe Vermont. to Michael Pepper Tech. And, yes. <laughs> brand new catalog. Um, yeah. So the, the, the other part of that, though, is uh, LaShawn, holla at your boy, was mm -hmm. saying like, oh, man, all these Vivo gang people, and I've never gotten to try a Vivo. And so the X70 Pro hasn't been getting as much attention or as much love just because I've been so focused on the X80 Pro. It, it's so a tough, I, it's a tough one when you have both and, and it's so, I mean, they're if close. There's, if, if there's one of our little gadget clan who can spend a couple weeks playing with the X70 Pro and see what he thinks. So I, I also packed that up and sent it out to him. So hopefully on, uh, on his stream on Fridays or at least on maybe some of the other streams like next Tuesday, I think he should have it by then. So maybe for Kimmy's stream, he might be able to like show that off. But uh, be good. No, it's been really fun. You know, it, it's one of those things I ended last year as the only person. That's true. On, on, uh, uh, I, I, mean, I keep saying Salah, Android Bosch. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah. On Android, Android Bosch's Bosch's Bosch. video. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I want to be sort of like professionally respectful of his channel. Um, exactly. I was yeah, the only the one who fronted Vivo. And now I feel like f through sheer force of Vivo marketing, making some stellar good choices, 
there are a few more Westerners who are picking up on some of the special things that this little sub brand of BBK are doing. And it's all the stuff that really lit me up last year getting to play with the X70s. So now it's, it's very exciting. Like I, I really do feel BBK is, is kind of picking up on flavors of what made Huawei so interesting mm -hmm. a couple years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flavors of what, when Samsung was more dynamic and was more aggressive in competing on hardware features. And now I think, you know, they're starting to, there, there's just that little bit more interest in ways that like, um, you know, we, we didn't see even last year, it didn't take much, like just a little momentum in that direction. And you're like, this is a much more interesting conversation than it was a couple of years back. And it's gonna get, it's gonna keep getting better. That's the exciting part. If the development and the progression that we've seen with the X80 Pro um, and what we've seen for with, I mean, even the Find, Find X5 Pro, I mean, with the additional mm -hmm. MPU on top of the 8, uh, the 8 Gen 1, Oppo is trying to push the limits. They're trying to focus more on for camera sure. performance. Uh, OnePlus is definitely improving quite a bit from what we've seen previous years. It's more, yeah. the refinements now that we've seen is, it's no longer dependent on the system, on the CPU and the, uh, the ISP or even the GPU. Yeah. The performance most, for the most part is way ahead of what we need. Now we need more refinement on camera, algorithm, post-processing, yeah. and so, controls. And I feel like Vivo is pushing that. V Vivo is the most aggressive of that because you were going to say like, you know, where it's not, you know, an issue with processing. I still feel like we haven't tapped it completely though because I, I, I know people get real pissy about it, but when you mm -hmm. see what the V1 is capable of on the X70 Pro Plus and what the V1 Plus is capable of on the X80 Pro, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm won over. I'm a convert. I used to be the guy who would complain that people only seemed interested in night into day, super bright, fake, saturated night mm -hmm. mode photos, like, you know, the early days of night sight or Apple's yep. first generation of night mode photos. And when you see what, you know, an X70 Pro Plus can do in extreme dark conditions with some of the fastest shutter speeds, you know, you can shoot it handheld and it's half the capture time of a Pixel 6 Pro and yep. it comes out significantly brighter with a cleaner image less likely to be you know messed up by handshake and it's getting the color exposure correct like the color processing is right even though the photo was taken in near blackout conditions absolutely um I, i'm going to continue being really snide to people that are oh but you know that's not authentic it should the dark scene should be dark as if like we've never used a long exposure on a traditional camera or you've never bracketed shots for HDR processing. We've never tried to do anything dramatic that the human eye can't naturally see with a camera. So you can shut up and you can sit down because now our phones are democratizing what used to be really difficult. It used to yeah. be you would set up a camera on a tripod on a bulb shutter for 30 second clips. Then your camera would also do this secondary long exposure with the shutter closed to get a noise imprint. So then, then it could do a noise canceling it's algorithm. Mean. And then you would take those and you would dump them into Photoshop and you would do a whole bunch of editing and processing. And if the phone's just doing that on its own, handheld, in yep. almost real time, I'm for it. I'm here for it. Let's think, do it. And that's and, what I and, that's what I really appreciate. I, it, but what I was trying to say before with Oppo's direction change is Oppo, I think, is starting to learn from Vivo with the coprocessor. Yes. That's where the MPU technology. So this is the when we saw yes. the technology is where Oppo is starting to learn by. So even though they're like technically a generation behind, like the Find X5 Pro is the first one that they introduced it with, where Vivo's been using it for some time. But that part's been is starting to spread. Yeah, and, and I, that's what I'm really liking. Good. That's what I'm liking. We're starting to see the love spread yeah. around. Not just, you know, Realme, OnePlus, and Oppo, but we're also starting some from the other side, from the Vivo and the IQ uh, departments and so on. So for me, I think, so long, a short story, long story, extremely short, whatever the way we say it, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to taking that challenge and being able to, to lean, yeah, it'll be toward, fun. you know, and lean on that uh, more as more of my port uh, portable solution. And of course, 
you know, it, it, I, like I said, it's already proven my, uh, for me uh, how it works. And I hope that the Find X3 Pro as well does the same. Uh, and we'll get a chance to, you know, like you said, talk about it on a weekly basis and see how things are going. Yeah. And see, this is what's making me so excited when I see comments like this. Uh, Simon says, Hypno saying that I've gone for a Vivo or IQ if they were available here. Yeah, that's true. He just had to settle. Just had to just, you know, I guess the consolation prize being an amazing honor magic for I mean, again, like we are so flush for some really competitive, some really fun options right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's been really exciting to see Michael Peppertech, uh, not to toot my own horn, but it makes me think of how happy I was when I first used the Mate 30 Pro, having people question oh if it's God. a phone. Those <laughs> photos were, again, the... Huawei took the Lumia ball and ran yeah. with it. The, the Mate 20 Pro Huawei's was for me absence. the big convert. Uh, well, no, sorry, the P20 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro won me over on Huawei and uh, Huawei tech with tech. Now, this is why like the P50 Pro does so well for me, but there's that whole functional thing that always kind of keeps me where I feel like I don't want to have to jump through those extra hoops to be able to share to something where I can just do it easily with a, you know, a Vivo or an Oppo or a OnePlus. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was uh, kind of came out wrong there, but um, Yes, the, bear, the 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 Magic Four Pro is is not. I it's mean, been it's awesome. Weird. It's a return to a honor. It's it's a re and but it's also honor elevated. I feel like it's a little bit more elevated yeah. than what we used to see from honor. Like you know, before well, they used to I, be. I, I I talked about it on on the podcast this Monday, and it was like it's weird that I'm getting this emotional about an honor, but I really felt like this was this was it. I was done. The View Twenty was going to be the last that I would ever get to play with this company, and they went out on such a high note. Mm -hmm. that getting the magic four in hand i mean for better for worse there are still some clunky things about honor phones that have oh, I, continued it, it, like uh, they're still there <laughs> some really clumsy things like the keyboard gets stuck on my lock screen mm -hmm. and that's like i remember that being a problem on the view 10 in a really weird way it's this it's this like return it's like a homecoming it's like a continuity and you're like all the things that i loved and all the things that made me frustrated about this brand have returned and it's Are like there. i know i know i'm not going to get that with htc i know i'm never going to get that with lg i'm never going to get that kind of homecoming and here's this sweet little honor and you're like the cameras are amazing the desktop mode is incredible. The performance yep. is very good. It's super clumsy and a bunch of software <laughs> transitions. I could this is I couldn't be happier. It, we need to it's we like need to get that fan, last update that uh we yes, were still the, missing that one update. Just a new it, patch that just came out. We're, we're still behind on that one, yeah. We're we're an update behind. But it's like if you're a fan of driving really quirky cars, like I was a huge fan of old sobs. Mm -hmm. They were Im impossible to work on. If you ever had to like do engine rebuilds on a Saab 900, it was miserable. It's like the worst car to ever, ever maintenance. But when it's running, it is such a unique driving experience for all of these weird torquey steer flaws, for the, the ignition key is in the cup holder between the main seats. The car handles in a really funny way, but it handles very dynamically. There's so much fun to drive. And you're like, that's how I kind of feel about phones like Honor, where you sort of fall in love with some of the quirks of how you get around the phone. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not all perfect. There are still all of these mishmashing ideas of UI, of Android versus whatever their skin is called now i can't remember still magic but yeah so that's he, right magic. yeah they veer, they veered whatever. off from but uh from huawei emui, OS, EMUI yeah. to magic but UI. but but you yeah. you sort of come to appreciate like they they had an idea there was a purpose behind why they made this decision i don't mm. know that it was the right decision but now that i've gotten used to it like i just kind of dig it I, like i'm 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 here for it so the honor and it's like going back to it yeah event. you're going back to that same familiar um experience this is why I, I was so um i was so happy to be able to get back into it i i covered the uh, magic 3 pro last year and unfortunately that one didn't didn't come out to the uh, international market uh but the four definitely you know when i saw it at nbc it, it surprised me i was very impressed with it um i even got a chance to play with the uh the v the magic v which is their version of their foldable um, right, right, right. But, it, you know, the reality is overall, it, it's a familiar feeling 
it, it, it kind of picks up right where the view 20 kind of left us off. Um, I, I got a chance to play a little bit later on with the honor 50, the 50 pro that was roughly around what we start having in a division when Huawei and honor, they, they lost the ability of using Google play services at the time. And it kind of changed where we weren't able to get honor devices in the U S anymore. So they weren't sold other than, I think that was the end, like the, 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 the best thing that we could get there. And right now, at least it's sold in Europe and the devices that we have are European edition devices. Uh, but they work yeah. for me, honestly, it, I, I get pretty good signals. Uh, the screen's beautiful. Battery life is really nice. Speakers are very good. Um, and then overall, yeah, there's nothing, there's no, it's, it's hard not to fall in love with the camera. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, this this Sp is uh, of camera, one of my plug. first macro shots from the Honor Magic 4. This is actually the main sensor with a 1.4 times zoom. Oh. Um, and I tapped on this little bundle of pollen in this lily mm -hmm. and the phone nailed the critical focus on the first try. And even though, oops, you're seeing some of my, uh, some emails there. Um, even though this isn't using the largest sensor, like this is now a sensor size that's becoming more competitive at ch with cheaper phones. It's a one over 1.5 We're seeing more. or something. Mm -hmm. um, working this close and hitting those macro distances, you can also see just how flipping gorgeous that bouquet but is in the, the background. Circle. Exactly. While the phone was perfectly performant in nailing critical focus on a tiny clump of pollen on a yellow on yellow flower in the shade, on a windy day, and this little slice of pollen is like a third the size of my pinky nail. Um, I'm, I'm digging this experience. This feels so classic Honor, mm -hmm. so classic Huawei. The cameras are spot on where they should be. And the rest of the phone is surprisingly performant. Like it, it yeah. really is um, an aggressive performer for, uh, for an HN1. I, I, I guess I, it, for me, from what we saw with uh, what I saw at MWC and what we got is very, I'm very happy that it translated very well. It, it wasn't just something that I saw on the show floor and got a chance to spend a few minutes with. Right. I'm able to use it and, and work with it. And um, I'm loving the actual, the, they also sent me the Honor Buds 3, the uh, the three pros that are actually pretty decent nice. there. So it, it's an ecosystem. And I was, I was really shooting to try to push out a video for them this week. Um, but I, I honestly, I'm running behind on on a few things. So you, you may have noticed that the the videos the last week or so I've been pushing out are, are slightly different than my normal, like you know, smartphone and so on. And I, I am going to go back into that. I realize, um, and that's why kind of we started at the beginning saying that the algorithm wasn't happy and how things are going. But yeah. um, you know what? Uh, I'm I don't care. I I'll say this. I put out a video first on the on the Leviathan version two from Razer literally the best pc speaker i've ever had and it sounds crazy good and it's just so good with rgb uh, <laughs> like that's just, just the little things i just want rb but it's also customizable so it's not like just a standard like rgb light that turn on you can jump into chroma mm -hmm. and you can actually customize different scenes and also yeah, customize nice. the color panel at the bottom so that it plays and then sync up your mouse and the whole bunch of things so for me it just it, it's the things that make me enjoy, like so playing games, watching movies, listening to music, especially listening to music um, without having to put some headsets on. Like if I just want to have something going up in the background or even conference calls works really nice. So but, you know, YouTube doesn't think people are interested. And I, I realize it's also sold out. I got a few comments on that. Everybody's like, you can't find it. I'm like, I know it's not available. Like every place that has it is sold out. I'm surprised like yeah. how. I, uh... I felt I felt kind of anxious, you know, one of one of the video, one of the things in our um title uh, yeah yeah, yeah. um i've been getting okay responses I, I feel like my video was just a little bit later than some of the earliest backers um this is the game sir x3 um, yeah we talked about that portable... one last did we talk about yeah that? i showed no, it we talked, so about... the... we talked about the other one where actually we talked about the glacier the other the game sir is the one with the cooler in the back right yeah it's got a peltier cooler oh yeah right? that's sorry take the back that's the one we talked about yeah, so, so I just showed it off, but the actual yeah. video for this went out this week. Yes. Um, and my video was just a little bit behind because there was the first wave of Indiegogo backers. Yes. Excuse me, who got theirs first. And um, the, the, uh, this is a, a, you know, sort of early in the product's production run. And there were two channels who were complaining about specific kinds of hardware issues. One channel was really like, yep, you know, if you do rapid button presses, then it totally locks up and you can't play games and it doesn't do, you know, it doesn't transfer the button pressing. We're like, 
I don't know. I'm playing Blaster Master on an NES emulator, and I'm hammering these, that button. these buttons to shoot, and it seems to be doing okay. Um, but but again, it's it's this is only in pre-order. So mm -hmm. now that the retail units are starting to um, th th they're they're starting to be made, I should say yeah. they're not shipping. They're, they're the production side, yeah. The pr starting their they finalize sales. the design and they're moving forward. Exactly. It always makes me anxious when I put out a video. And the product like literally can't be purchased yet. So so far the responses have been mostly positive okay. um, to the video. But a few people are like, "Oh, I just got the X2," and you're like, "Well, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, I can see that, but it's still actually not shipping yet. So yeah, enjoy the X2. I mean, enjoy, like, yeah, it, yeah. You're not missing. <laughs> you're, you, you can, you're literally it, missing putting in a pre-order right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, no. Like, it's, that's that's the gig. It, and it, and that's how I felt like with the with the beauty. Uh, so at the time that I got mine, when I got the uh, the the the, the, the Viathan one, a, sp a PC bar, uh, it was available mm -hmm. in a couple of places, and it was uh, maybe a week or so later, when I was finally coding the video and everything, and I'm putting the links and all of that stuff. Yeah, Best Buy sold out, Razer sold out, Amazon sold out, yeah. and you can't find it. And it's it's that good. Let's just say that it it is literally that good of a uh, of a, a PC solution if you're looking to have an audio speaker. Um, for me, I've been using two tower speakers that I've had for literally over 20 years. Um, yeah. And I'm not kidding. They still sound great. They still work great. Mm -hmm. They're Sony's. Um, and this is back. Yeah, I just have some say. pre Sonus near fields. Like they're not fancy, but you yeah. know what? They've, they've lasted forever. They've forever. So when, when I had the opportunity to check it out, I was like, yes. And yes, please. I'd love, yeah, please just, yeah. Uh, so the, the experience overall is very nice, and I'm hoping that you know more stock will be available. But even you know, with the situation with GameSir, I've had that before too, and I've worked with companies where they're on Indiegogo or they're on a Kickstarter type of a campaign. It's a little bit weird, yeah, because you you know people can't yeah. go by; they can pre-order. The timing is odd because like a batch did go out, and well, apparently, yeah, but, you know, if you're in that early, early, early batch, like you know, you could have some early teething pains or some early issues, like. I don't know what to say. Someone who's rocking one of these controllers and the buttons don't work, you would like, yeah, that's pretty damning. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. But yeah. on video, like I, I even shot like a little clip of me like just hammering. I've got it as an unlisted video. If you need to see that rapid button presses work on the Game Sir X3, I can share the link with you. Um, but but it's yeah. also like all of these conversations are always going to be works in progress. And it, and it does kind of bother me because like when someone complains about something like that, mm -hmm. um, I always wonder like, but what did the manufacturer say? To oh, me, those... if if you pick up a controller and you push the buttons rapidly and the character isn't shooting on screen and it registers as no button presses, that would be serious enough for me to turn around and say, maybe I should send GameSir an email. Yeah. I can't believe that's expected performance for a controller. Mm -hmm. That seems wrong. And so whenever I see something like that and someone's complaining about that in a video, I wonder like, so you're complaining about it and you're demonstrating it. Great. Do you really expect that that's the way that they meant to ship the product? That to me is worth the couple minutes out of your day to go and ask GameSir. Oh, especially if you hey, got it on the is campaign. Is there a firmware you can even update or, can, yeah. or did I maybe do something wrong with one of the caps? Because you can pull the caps like if you want to rearrange your uh, X, Y, A, B caps, like you can pull them out and rearrange the letters on your controller. Like maybe something else is locking that thing up. Maybe there's some other issue there and you need some tech support, but it just seems odd to me when it's like, no, this thing was broken. Like, okay. Yeah, no, but, and, and if, if they if it is, you're right. They also need to talk about the can can the are they having problems? Can the company can back it up? Them? That's an opportunity yeah, yeah. to chat about like support and stuff. Because that's like, what people want to know. Is the company going to stand by their product? Is the exactly. company going to argue with you in a PR nightmare behind the scenes issue? You know, like those are the kinds of things that actually help inform the review process. It's not just exactly. it's broken. It shouldn't be broken when you buy it. Like, well, cool. I mean, I, how has the cooling been working for you though? That's I think that's <laughs> a little, uh, uh, like have you noticed substantially tamer numbers from the eight eighty eight or the HN one? Um, from both, yeah, I've been okay. I've been kind of just randomly popping phones in and playing a little Undead Horde and seeing like it does seem to help 
Um, yep. it, it does seem to help maintain higher frame rates. Uh, the, the Peltier cooler, see, what's, what's kind of surprising is like, you also kind of need to know what your what's inside your phone. Yeah. So I, I don't exactly. have a Galaxy S22 to test. To okay. me, that would actually be one of the better torture tests because it's a very common phone. We're, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that out of all the phones that you can buy $800 or higher, Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus are going to be very well represented. Probably. But we also know that Samsung hasn't put in the best cooling hardware on those phones, and they're the most susceptible to thermal throttling out of most of the phones. Like, Motorola probably isn't doing anything fancier, but they're letting the phone run hot. You know, yep. like... The phone will be uncomfortable to hold, but it will do what you ask it to do. And I put this phone in a Peltier cooler controller case like the X3, and it seems a bit more manageable. It seems a bit more reasonable. It's still giving me crazy high frame rates. The phone doesn't feel as hot. You pull mm -hmm. it out, and there's a definite cold spot on the mm -hmm. back of the case where heat seems to be kind of coming out the back of this little of this little fan unit, it's doing what I think it should do. What I would be what I would be interested in seeing is how well this little cooler might be able to handle the phone that I think is under is under engineered for the SOC that it's packing. And would, to me, yeah. that main test would be an S22. An S22 the S22 was, was very disappointing in a performance standpoint. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So the, 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 the main beefy test that I put this through, the Moto is one of my favorite phones to talk about because it's running the 8 Gen 1. Mm -hmm. to, I think it's running it to Qualcomm spec. It doesn't seem to be managed or throttled in any way. Like the phone will run hot doing even moderate or basic tasks because it's going to do the task mm -hmm. as fast as it possibly can as with as powerful an SOC as it can as it can push. Um, so I do my batch photo processing test where I take 200 photos um, from a from a Sony full frame camera. Mm -hmm. um, they're all raw photos and I yeah. run a bunch of edits on them and then I save all of those photos. It's, it's a grueling test. An 8 Gen 1 can sometimes take almost 20 minutes to complete oh. the mm -hmm. entire batch of photos. But you time the first half against the second half and you can kind of get a sense of like, in a crazy sustained workload, we can see how much it's starting to throttle per batch of photos, like in 50 yeah. photo blocks or in 100 photo blocks. And so the Moto is one of the fastest phones that I can run through the first 100. And then it's not one of the fastest phones the second, to yeah. run well, through because the, the second temperatures, 100. Yeah, because you hit that It's really part. getting hot. I mean, you end that test and the Moto is uncomfortably warm to the touch. So um, the, the throttle is somewhere around 15 to 20%. The second, the second batch of photos is 20% is 20 slower than the first batch. And throwing the game sir on there, cut that down to like 3%. Yeah. So, so the thermal throttle was almost completely mitigated by the game sir putting a cold spot on the back of the phone, which means I have to believe there's a decent sized pad, if it's a graphite pad, or if it's some mm -hmm. kind of thermal cooler, some kind of vapor chamber, where it is able to get more heat out of the back of the phone. At 3%, I'm almost in margin of error territory. It's, yeah, so it's, it's able to maintain the same mm -hmm. high performance in the first 100 photos, where it's one of the fastest phones of the year, and then keep it, and then keep that going. And there aren't many phones that can do that outside of the red magic mm -hmm. which has a built-in fan <laughs> to get oh, hot I, air out of the phone uh, and incredible. and it's an improved fan too the, the the red magic 7 pro and the 7 for this year at least year over year they keep improving the fan system in there but it is oh, true yeah. i mean they're the only company that's truly actively trying to cool or run or at least dissipate the heat this is literally what it is just allowing the heat to leave mm -hmm. the phone in a manner where it does not generate so a lot of heat on the, the front. red magic with the mm -hmm. game sir Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. Yeah, you know, I, like, I, I was able to do a bunch better with their with the cooler that Red Magic sold, mm -hmm. sold for the six S uh, for the six series oh, yeah. last year. So I, I I totally understand. For me, the challenge was always about the placement of it because, as we've seen before, a lot of devices or a lot of a lot of times when we're looking at hardware and where the heat spots are, are typically where the battery connects to mm -hmm. the motherboard or where the SOC is sitting, which is typically close to the camera sensors. And those are the ones that are typically like to the top part of our phone. It's not really sitting in the center. So the cooler for me, at least with Red Magic, was a challenge because I was at, at some point blocking yep. the internal fans. 
which was like counterproductive at that point. But so yeah, Gansey Tech Nerd, I have used the game, sir, with the already excellent red magic. So here's the, the issue with the red magic is the top third of the phone is yeah. where it runs the hottest. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. runs the hottest in my in, in my use on the seven pro. Mm -hmm. Um it runs the hottest actually on the front of the phone. Yes, the screen well, because gets it, to it, like it, up it, over 120 <laughs> degrees. I mean, the hottest I, I, I got it to was the, one, the seven was 126, 127. And I, I think you got it up your seven into the 130s, right? Yeah, I, I crossed didn't the, the 130. Pro. No, uh, and I was like, okay, yeah, this this should this should not be legal. I was enjoying Undead Horror. Don't get me wrong, I was yeah. enjoying it at 120 frames per second. So throwing but, the cooler on the back and putting a yeah. big old cold spot pretty close to where the fan assembly is seems to take some of the pressure off of the screen. Absolutely. It still gets hot because what I love about the Red Magic, and it's kind of some of what I like about the Moto 2, um, you tell it to do something. Mm -hmm. I have set the screen to 120 hertz. I'm going yeah. to play this game. You need to run the game at 120 hertz. That's all the phone understands. So it will try to drive that as hard as it possibly can yeah, yeah. by throwing a cooler on the back of the phone using charge separation to take the battery out of the out equation, of the yep. letting the fan in the phone run to full bore, this, the phone still got over 110 degrees, but like every, every game that I can play that will play at the full refresh of that, of that screen just pegs. It just pegs at 120 hertz. And For a lot of the heavier lifting games, things like Pascal's Wager or right. um, Alien Isolation is still broken. And it just it just makes me so sad because that would be such a beautiful way to test it. But even broken, mm -hmm. it's it's um, it, it climbs, I think, even another two to three frames per second, which means mm -hmm. it's now I got it up to 36 or 37 frames per second, yeah. which is about 20 percent higher on a PC port of Alien Isolation than the next closest performing phone. Um, like I think the Moto would play it somewhere around 31 frames per second. So, you know, even though you got this 120 Hertz refresh rate display, Alien Isolation is gonna play at 30 or lower. Oh, <laughs> In no. a lot of phones, it's gonna be lower, yeah. um, but not on the Red Magic. The Red Magic is actually driving it higher than what it thinks the cap on Android should be. And so it's that kind of it's that kind of thing. It's like the Red Magic will see that oh the thermals are still in check. I guess we can push harder. You know there is no thermal curve. Like it doesn't turn anything off. It just keeps running the SOC hotter yeah. and hotter if it detects that it's got the room to do it. So the the cooler on this is is kind of a phenomenal combo with that built-in fan. It's actually a little scary. Like at some point I I go. Maybe 60 frames per second is fine. I just don't want my phone to melt down. I, it's so for me when, with the cooler the, uh, solution, I, I realize 110 is not necessarily the best answer to anybody. But when you're using it with a controller, like when you're using something like the GameSir, and you're able to drop the temperature to about 110, and your fingers are not on the display, so you're not getting that yep. heat. It is still radiating the heat, but it's much less. I think it's more manageable and more sustainable in the long run mm -hmm. when you're running things like that because of the the, the like you said the stress uh, you're stressing the system. I, I at some point or another, regardless of how much you can't run it this hot all the time, there has to be somewhat of a wave. 120, 130 for me. I think the difference between the two systems that we have here is not necessarily the, the cooling system. Is that my unit? Uh, the the Red Magic for some reason allowed the Red Magic Seven to go to one sixty five or one sixty six frames per second, which is yep. typically how I had the display set to. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I wasn't playing it at one sixty five, but you know it, the yeah the Seven was, Pros under display cameras just like the Axon Sevens. So yeah, I don't know it, why it's capped at one twenty, but they seem to not be able to do under under display camera at a faster refresh rate than one twenty. But I gamed for a little over a half hour, undead horde. All the full graphic settings, like the top graphics performance, yeah. um, it never dropped under 120 frames per second, which is mind-boggling for that game. Like oh that's 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 difficult for a lot of PCs to I, keep I, Undead Horde running at 120. You cannot play the game at a, little, at a slower frame rate once you play it at 120. It's, it's like, like you see, yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah, you're like it's choppy. This thing is not playable. But, no, I mean, but for but. for gaming for a little over a half hour, charge separation on, one mm percent -hmm. off my phone battery. I feel like that's pretty good. 
it's still definitely like trickle draining, but it's all the other phone stuff. It's not like, because if you were really just play that game in that other way, like even gaming for a half hour, you would see a slightly more noticeable decrease in battery over that, that short period of time. Absolutely. And then I pull it out of the game, sir, and it's warm, but it's not screaming scary hot like it was when I just had it in my Steel Series. Yeah. When I was playing in my Steel Series controller. Oh, my Steel Series is right here on my desk. When I was playing it clipped to this, um, you know, the fan was doing its job. The phone played the game. It, it did well, keeping the frame rate above 110 frames per second. Yeah. But you touched the phone and you're like, wow, that is uncomfortable. Pulling it out of the game, sir, it was still toasty, but it wasn't scary, screaming hot. Again, I, I like things like this that help us kind of extract what premium phone performance can look like. You know, if I could get charge separation on a phone like the Honor Magic 4 with a great mm -hmm. desktop mode, and yep. then I could set up like, I don't want the wireless charger, I want the Peltier cooling desktop stand. Desktop stand. Right, you know, prop it up like this, you plug the phone in, a monitor on your desk kicks on with the desktop mode, you hear the fan kick on, the phone's charging, but it's like 20 degrees cooler when you pick it up. Like, that's exactly now the kind of modular uh, hardware life that I want for these gadgets. I, and I kind of want some of these solutions also to come from companies like first party solutions. I, yeah. I, I realize, so companies like GameSer and some of the, uh, or, you know, when we start talking about Steel Series and controllers, they're, they're, I'm not gonna say they're an attempt to patch, but they're, they're, this is the other companies trying to provide their solution that is more of a, a device or a solution that works on many devices. So it's, it's always gonna be, Mm -hmm. Kind of, you need to understand, like you said at the beginning, you need to understand how your device works and where is the heat, where are the hotspots on your phone, and how how is a, a cooler like you know like you have that's fixed in the center of the controllers would work, or would it be more of something like what we saw with the Red Magic would be a better solution, but I think uh, overall at the end of the day, you know, companies that make these devices that are intended to you know, supposedly Qualcomm, not supposedly, but Qualcomm has stated before saying that they provide the the architecture on how to be able to manage these device, these SOCs, the 888, the HN1, we we know are on a climbing slope of temperature yeah. requirement or pull power draw and performance. But the concern though, you know, I think that's where, you know, like Motorola would jump in with like a nice stock or maybe Red Magic. Red Magic used to actually sell a dock. They used to have a, an HDMI output yeah. and a, uh, what's it called? Like an ethernet cable dock that I used to review, but that was on the five. Mm -hmm. So something like that on the Red Magic 6 or 7, allowing us to play, plug it into a TV, reduce the display function, turn off the display. You know what I mean? Like reduce yeah. that part and let let the, the dock provide some of that cooling because it also included a fan in there. Man, yeah, that would be so much fun. Like desktop experience on on a Red Magic would be crazy. So I'm hoping that's maybe the direction that they would bring bring it back. But first party always works best because it's designed for your phone. Uh, ROG <laughs> does that, and of course Red Magic does it great. Uh, Although but I, you yeah. know, it's 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 been so funny because like we've seen things like wireless chargers that have a fan built into them. You're like, okay, I get that. Specifically, I, the Honor. I one. haven't. No, but I haven't played a lot with these Peltier coolers before, and they're not yeah. that expensive. No, there's when there's you shop and there's a, many a gaming options. cooler online. That, you know, yeah, yeah. you can you can pick one of these things up for like thirty bucks. Like they're not crazy, but why not build that into a dock? You know, instead of just putting a little fan that kind of cools a couple degrees off your phone, why not put on a pad that can cut literally like uh, so? In my office, the when I did one of my main tests. Mm -hmm. It started at 82 degrees and af 82 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. not Celsius. Um, <laughs> um, lost, it started at 82 quantity, degrees one, Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, right. And and then it went. It, then fusion happened in my office. It was this. It was the darndest thing. Um, so uh, it started out as 82. I plugged it in. Three minutes later, it was down to 44 degrees Fahrenheit. It, it, it chilled almost 40 degrees in a matter of minutes. And I just feel like that would be so much more effective than a wireless charger is to have mm. a cabled charger that you slot the phone down into, and activates the Peltier cooler, and then runs your phone. I mean, you can you charge your phone battery faster because you're actively getting heat m much more efficiently out of that phone. Yeah, I absolutely. feel like something like that in a dock would be fantastic i think so, it's a little too much to 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 look at for 
pure portability. Um, it, I, I see. Peltier I see coolers, more like uh, like Poco going in with like the F4 GT, which would be something like that. Yeah, that, that could benefit from that. For sure. Uh, ROG Red Magic. I think it's going to definitely. This is more of a solution. I see more gaming centric or maybe more performance. Well, but but what I mean is is like mm -hmm. there's there's a certain idea of mobile gaming. Yeah. Right. And and so like Gabaletta has a comment here talking about the game, sir. I just wish they had made it the grips slightly chunkier to add batteries to power the fan while you're on the go. And I got a lot of comments on that on my video about that too. And you're not wrong. That would be really cool. Yeah. But first, you don't know how tall the phone is gonna be. So you've got to be able to route power cabling into these to get that's that's also why this is a two two plug solution. Mm -hmm. You've got one USB-C that, that charges the phone and one USB-C that powers the fan and the Peltier cooler. The power draw off of this thing is not insignificant. Like, it's not no. just a fan. It's a thermoelectric cooler. So It, it, it practically killed my battery on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the 7 when even, I plugged it in. When you drive yeah, it, it off of a portable cell, it's going to very quickly drain that portable cell. So this is already really chunky. To add more heft to it, you'd probably need to put cells in both grips. And then you would also need to figure out what is the cabling where we can have expanding or contracting cables that can handle that power draw. You don't want just flimsy little like, <laughs> like AA battery cables in here. It need to be something a little bit more substantial and arrive at an engineering cost that isn't going to double the price of this unit to deliver something that could probably only run for a short period of time out in the field regardless. Yeah. If you're going to power that fan, you're not talking about hours of gameplay. You're talking about tens of minutes of gameplay. So already, when we're out playing games, you play a game on your phone, it's less likely you know, you're really going to get into this while you're waiting in line at the supermarket. Yeah, if you're waiting in line at the supermarket, you're playing Solitaire or Gem Swap or Dots or Boggle or something quick, you know, like minutes of that. When you sit down to play a game, it's more likely that plugging in a cable isn't going to be too much of a, of a hassle. Oh, yeah, or even uh, sitting HS in the power, power control. Long, long trips, you could probably get a... And a, a, a you like pop a, in a yeah. cable and you can plug into the to the charge port. Yeah, like a dual uh, You're on an down. airplane. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't have power on your airplane seat, you can plug in a battery like a really big portable battery and kind of run it all off of that for, mm -hmm. for a part of your flight, it'll drain your portable battery pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. So, so that to me becomes a part the important part of the conversation where we're not overlooking a completed product, mm -hmm. wishing for an imaginary perfect product that can exist. You can yeah. do that thing. You can, you can make this significantly heavier, a lot clunkier. The weight on these arms would be heavier for having batteries in both grips. Maybe that's gonna be more fatiguing, but you could do it. All you would need to do is pay two to three times more for all of that engineering and R&D. And if you're down for that, I'm sure there's a company that could maybe start designing a product if you can get a number of people to say, yes, I like that. Let me spend $200 on it. And then they'll do that. They'll make that manufacturing run. But right yep. now it's, there is nothing like I've played with that is this effective as a cooler and has a good controller on it in one combination. I'm, I'm not even sure, and I know TK, you've played with a few more of them than I have. Have you yeah. found a cooler that has a battery on it? Because I feel no. like that would be counterproductive to removing it, heat. It, it, it's, from, yeah, exactly. Because the, so what happens when you add that, when you add the battery factor into it, which obviously, and the cooler draws battery power much faster where this is where it kind of became counterproductive when I was using it with the Red Magic because it was drawing power from the battery on top of the phone being drawing battery. In. So you're you're dissipating the battery faster. But ones mm -hmm. that include uh, battery would, like as you said, it would be counterproductive because it'll be generating heat and at the, the same time trying to cool and provide cooling for something else. What I ended up doing with my solution uh, for me to, for more of a portability solution is I literally end up mm -hmm. using just a power bank with a dual USB-C uh, right, 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 plug right. out of it. And I just run wires, one to the phone, one to the actual uh, charger. And then that was more of my portable solution. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing, but you should you should right. just treat it as you're you're going to sit down. You're going to be basically, you know, you need that much power and you want to be able to stay cool for an extended amount of time um, in the car, like you said, on a plane. It's doable. 
I don't know if it's something that would make more sense where you have something else on the actual unit itself to generate heat. Because even if you do add those batteries into the grips, those are going to start drawing faster. W will you be okay having warmer grips generating more moisture on your hands? <laughs> right. So typically when you're playing with cooler... control... Yeah, the you know? cooler isn't going to cool the grips. <laughs> no, no, but that's what I'm trying to say. It's like you have to also kind of, it, it's the, like, I know you, you in, in theory, when you think about it, the last thing you want is a warm controller. Number one thing that I always gets you, obviously, is when you when you start playing for an extended amount of time, your hand starts getting sweaty and you're getting that warm texture there. So you start feeling the slippery, you're not hitting the buttons the right way. So the last thing you want to do is add something inside of it to generate more heat. Yeah, I could see how that kind of becomes kind of like a clash at, at some point. Um, I, I still say running a power bank externally may still be the best solution, like a, a power okay. bank that's sitting on the table, but yeah. This is a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. I just plugged in the, uh, it's it's fully charged. Um, no, I, I just plugged in the game, sir. I'm gonna let it run. It's all, oh, oh, that's already cold. You know, what I might do is just like kind of like sit on it <laughs> and, and cool my bottom. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna let it run, I mean, cause we're probably gonna be talking for at least another half hour, right? I, I, I don't know why I wanna so, say this, so but let's, chill, let's see. Daddy. Chill, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> chill, chill. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to let it go. Let's let's see how much this tanks or how much it pulls, how much power drop pulls off of a, a 6000 milliamp hour battery. I think that's fair, fair. Okay. you know, because I kind of feel like what would be reasonable for portability is somewhere in the range of 10. I feel um, like 10 would be more reasonable. Yeah, because that, you, that, you remember, that'd you're be running your phone at the same time. Battery. So to me, I say that, you know, you my 10,000 milliamp hour battery is dead. I don't it's. I haven't charged it in a while. So we're, we're going to let this run. I'm just going to set it okay. over here on the side desk, and then we'll come back to it. Someone please remind me when we get to the end of this podcast. No, no, absolutely. And, and we'll see um, how, how well it does on yeah, this. Because, yeah, again, I, it, it's it's not a situation where, like, if you added a 6,000 milliamp hour battery to the weight of this already, it is, it's also concerning just, like, how much how much heftier you're making something that's supposed to be portable. Well, we you can you also use have it to add your phone. Remember, your phone Without battery, the... your phone's already weighted inside of it. Right. Just, not just the controller by itself. It's battery plus phone plus uh, plus controller. It becomes very, like you said, the and, and it has LED. Point. So if it can't even make it the half hour, then we'll see the LEDs kick off. That's true. That's true. It does. Um, it does. It has. It has the RGBs. It's got lights on it. So. One thing I do want to talk about, and I, I before we get to one, because I, I couldn't fit it into the in the title of the video. I wanted to talk a little bit about nothing. I'm assuming okay. you saw you you saw the you saw the announcement, not the announcement. You saw the uh, the renders. Oh yeah, they put the, out the design of the phone. The, the, the design good. of the phone, the by the back of the phone, the iPhone seven. Yeah, uh, I thought it, was it iPhone seven looked... or iPhone eight. Uh, <laughs> it has that design. I, I think it looks nice. I actually like the. Um, the LED, I, I'm assuming those are LEDs. They're going to be actually there. There's a couple of LEDs around the camera sensor. There's one out right around the, the center coil for the wireless charger. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still in that mode that I, I like, I see that. And I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people are getting excited about it and, you know, it's the, it's the new device and so on. So I look at this and I see, and, and I know people are, some, some reviewers are going to jump on this and say, well, it only has two sensors. Why are you doing it with two sensors? What, why are you not holding the three, four, five, six sensors that most companies are doing? And how are right. you expected to, you know, change the mobile and, world? And don't, when, don't you want to just line up all those people and stooge slap them? Like, yeah, it's just like the I, moment I'm not, I said. I, I'm not. I'm not predisposed to defending nothing. I feel like this is going to be a giant hype machine, which oh, is very doubtful that it's, it's going to pull this off. But to sit there and yeah, complain. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is good. The two cameras. Uh, again, you can sit down, sir. I, I, I have nothing kind to com to say to someone Google, who's please, just complaining. Please about walk in the here and show them how to. Sensors. No, no, and but that's the thing. <laughs> I, I can totally see. Like right now, a lot of people are still in that exciting phase, and I think at some point, to a certain extent, once the device is officially announced on the twelfth of July. We're going to see some expectations. We're going to start seeing some people, and obviously, some reviews are going to drop. There's mm -hmm. no question that you know Carl is already lined up certain reviewers, and Marquez is already playing with it right now, uh, just because <laughs> that's how it is. Um, sure. I, I I'm looking at this, and I'm and I'm reading, and not trying to read like tea leaves and so on. I mean, this is literally Carl's bread and butter. This is what Carl does. I think the phone's definitely going to have a good. A good base. A lot of people are going to like it. There's going to be a good demand for it because the way they're doing it right mm -hmm. now, they did this exact same thing with the, what they did with their earbuds. They're putting it for auction. 
for the first few units yeah. for like first 100 units to try to create more hype more mm -hmm. oh my god exclusivity kind of thing yeah. um i think you know realistically at the end of the day is it going to be that big of an impact it's hard for a device unless it's a truly super accessible super super available everywhere it's not going to have the same impact as what oneplus did because oneplus didn't have an impact at the beginning people liked it for different reasons and it had that weird it was at the right time was a right very spot. different market yeah very different user base very different. absolutely modding roming all of that stuff was much more pronounced um, people were way into it at the time and it was fed specifically to that niche group it was feeding into those techies um Carl is trying to appeal to the general masses of people that are already comfortable in what they're using. And again, so it, the the thing that I'm, I'm wanting to do is I want to settle my expectations. I am excited to see more news. I'm in fact that you're sharing the design of the back of the phone yeah. is very nice. It, it has a lot of, at least for me right now, I feel like they're pulling a lot of inspiration of the iPhone. I don't know why that flat surface, the, the camera. So it's, yeah. but they're still making it unique, which I'm liking it. They're not just flat yeah. out you know, copying the design and saying, this is not an apple. It's a circle with a, I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's funny how fair you're being because of like, you know, I'm really going to try and keep my expectations in check. And it's like, I don't know that my expectations could be lower. I, I really what, what I, what I, what I mean I really, by that is I, 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 I want I don't it to want it to fail. I don't want a, someone to, to build up the infrastructure, actually make a product and then fail. It yeah, breaks my heart when we don't get an essential phone too. Yeah. It breaks my heart when FX Tech seems to fumble every launch on their slider keyboards. Like something I, I, interrupts their flow every single time. They even and I have don't such want an amazing someone... collaboration with XDA on the yeah. second version. And it's still. It's kind not of like, enough. It's no. not enough to just sit there and try and pin enthusiasts because they'll say, we want the moon and the stars. And then the company will bend over backwards to give it to them. And then they'll sit back and go, but it's too expensive. I'd buy a Samsung instead. And you're like, well, then what did we do all this for? Again, it's like trying to appease Firefly fans and coming out with the movie Serenity and then no one goes to see it in theaters. Like, you can't win that way. And that's what happened to OnePlus. The enthusiast market that OnePlus built is insufferable. They are the worst. They demand yeah. the most. They pay yep. the least. They complain yep. the loudest. Absolutely. You can't win there. No. So uh, my, my expectations on nothing are exceedingly low. And I very, very much feel what we're going to get is a ton of hype and a ton of style and not a lot of substance. I think we're going to get a very capable, average mid-ranger that has a lot of aspirational marketing and a lot of feel-good comments built around it. That's what and I it's feel not like going to do yep. anything much functionally different than a Galaxy A52. No, so what they're trying to do is, if, at least from what he said at, the, at that last fundraising campaign, um, they're trying to leverage other ecosystems on the market. So they're trying to leverage Samsung's sure. ecosystem in in a, in a certain specific, he wasn't very specific. It was actually in a very general statement kind of a thing. I pretty much feel like that's where it's going to land, but he's building us right now to the Lamborghini style experience. And if, again, for anybody that, and everybody that's ever worked, not worked, or at least has has followed his previous endeavor, Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. OnePlus has had uh, have had a very big appeal. The way they did it and the way they built it, that the you know the flagship killer, all of that. Again, it was a different time, a different place. But he also, I think, him and Pete Lau did a much better kind of working together. It was never always just Carl Pei. It was always the yeah. team. Carl Pei and Pete Lau is what made OnePlus get to where it is. Uh, what we're getting right now is excitement, and we're getting a lot of support, and we're getting a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. So because of what we've seen before this would have been no different if andy rubin was trying to put out another this again with the essential phone trying to get the whole he worked at google a whole bunch of stuff right. so july 12th is less than a month away what we've seen so far on the nothing ear one buds are they were good buds for what for some for the people that enjoyed them but yeah. they're not super special right no they were priced at 100 bucks. They were never meant to be the flagship of the earbuds. They were not trying to beat Sony or Apple at their game. They were trying to literally land in that sweet spot in the middle and trying to basically give a unique uh, experience. And I feel like the Nothing One is going to be the exact same thing. It's going to hit that middle ground. It's going to be somewhat affordable, more affordable than some of the other ones. Sure. And and I think... And like, again, I, we've, it, we've had options on that since 
I mean, like what? Since the A fifty one, that are I would say it, it, insert Xiaomi, insert Oppo A series, insert. Uh, no, insert... I, let's 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 keep it to the United States. Uh, you sure. know, this is where a year old iPhone is going to be competing. It maybe again, all of this is going to be highly price dependent, and yeah. it always bugs the p out of me. It's like, well, it would be successful if it had all the best specs and it was cheaper. You know, like if that's all you have to contribute to a conversation, then you can f um, off and please and move on. Yeah, next conversation, please. Yeah, go no. go harass, go go pollute someone else's comments. Um, you have to for understand. Me it's, yeah, it, it, it's we've got some better competition here in the United States, even for mid rangers, than I think people appreciate. You, you're the rumors are pointing to this being a two camera system. If mm -hmm. I look at that that render or this this reveal of reveal. what the back of the phone looks like it looks like it's going to be last generation camera sensors assuming what the size of the phone is i seriously doubt we're getting much better than half inch cameras mm -hmm. on on the back so that's in the ballpark of like a pixel 5a we're probably going to get a snapdragon 7 gen 1 like maybe this is going to be their partnership with qualcomm to be one of the first that's a good to launch one. that that's phone. a good one yeah, yeah i was thinking something and you're like okay or... cool so yeah. if I've got last gen sensors on, you know, on a sort of a stripped build of Android and a, a seven gen one, a 700 series SOC, why would I buy that over a Pixel 6a? Why wouldn't I step up to Tensor with incredible Vulkan graphics performance, excellent multi-core performance and single core performance that gives an eight gen one a pretty decent run for its money if we're talking a similar ballpark on a company that's now going to be promising even longer software support because they control the SOC. Yeah. Like what what's what's the draw for me there? Cuz I seriously doubt the nothing phone is going to have the generations of camera refinement that Google's going to bring to the table on that no, on that no. older sensor. That's like what you can do with the Pixel 5a yeah. on that camera is astounding considering that sensor size because Google has been polishing that camera for so long. There, I, there is so little that I feel nothing can do to be price competitive, to be performance competitive, and not just deliver a ton of hype. Because right now, even, even an A53, I don't think it's a great option, but it's a solid, save you a little cash, probably going to nope. be a cheaper phone on contract kind of phone. Oh, I think Pixel exactly. 6a is going to be a monster. You can always Absolutely. go with an older iPhone, you know, go with an iPhone 12 or even an iPhone 11. Yeah. and probably land close to this price mm -hmm. performance ratio i i'm i'm like again i'm really hoping i'm wrong and i'm really hoping nothing can do something interesting but so far it just seems like so much empty fluff feelings marketing and i'm so over the the so-called enthusiasts that fit into that trap the ones that constantly whine they want to be told that they're special. They want to be told that they did. They bought the right thing. Yeah. They also kind of want to show off this almost perverse, like, well, I spent even less on my phone to get this SOC. You should buy the flagship killers, not the flagships. And you're like, cool. But like, you also endured a whole number of other compromises to get that cheaper price point. Let's there, not pretend it's just a one-to-one -one victory. That and to top that off, the accessibility to the device is also limited by the venues that they're using to sell. They went with StockX again with the same company that they went with before. Um, they're using Flipkart in uh, in India. They're using again non primary, non main release channels. I mean, mm -hmm. it took them a while before they were able to get the earbuds on Amazon. That is going to hinder. Uh, Limited yeah. availability in this age is very different than what we had when the OnePlus came out. It was a very different time. And again, I but the not to make it sound like we're trying to bag on it. The reality at the end of the day, we both would wish for this to obviously surprise us and give us more more than what we think it is. I feel like the what they showed us with the earbuds is the same thing that they're going to show us here. And the availability is going to make it limited. The, the I feel like the you know not enough people getting it will make people want it. I don't really feel that way. The enthusiast maybe, but the general consumer that couldn't See, you know never heard of it I, before and that couldn't get it, they'll move on. I think it's going to be a really limited number of very ego fragile former OnePlus fans that are even mm -hmm. going to consider this. 
Oh, absolutely. It, it's, I, I mean, I, that's I where can't the hype is coming there are from. So many of those, it's where you know, it's flagship where Carl... killer fans left that haven't moved on to brands like Poco. Yeah. Cause I mean, let me tell you like Poco and real me have been rocking my socks. Iku, mm -hmm. the enthusiast phones that you get out of an Iku right now. Like I just played with that Neo six yeah. Snapdragon 870, 12 gigs of Ram, 256 gigs of storage, 120 Hertz, really solid sc uh, screen. The companion cameras are kind of garbage, but the main camera is in the same ballpark size wise as an mm -hmm. iPhone 13 Pro. And if you, you know, allow for exchange rates, full MSRP, which you probably won't pay $450. I, I do not believe nothing is going to come in with the phone that performant, that powerful, great battery life, a, a class leading camera sensor size and hit 450. I just can't believe their first gen product. So what you what you're buying is I feel good buying something counterculture from the guy who made the original flagship killer. And, I think and that to me most... is an extremely dangerous place to be in this market, which is phenomenally more competitive than and, when OnePlus originally launched. And the way I want to see what I wanted or would like to hear is obviously for the people that are backing it, for the comp for the the big names that are putting their weight behind. Um, you know, when the device comes out, I mean, there, I want to see actually like a personally example. I would love to see Casey's video, a review of this phone. You know what I mean? Casey's a backer. Casey is in there and Casey is a photographer. Yeah. He, he relies on his equipment heavily to produce content, mobile sure. content. So this is going to be a big, either, I'm not saying like a make it or break it, but like people are going to look forward to seeing what Casey has to say. People are going to look forward to seeing what, you know, other people are going to look like. I don't think a lot of people are going to jump in on the beginning. I think this is so much first generation and it's yeah. going to be like you said the software on the on the processing on the image that was the biggest concern that we had with the uh, with the essential one it wasn't the software wasn't ready for the hardware the hardware may have been there but the ecosystem was not it, it needed a few updates it well, needed and, more. and it's why it was so sad we never got an essential two yeah yeah because i feel like essential would have been the perfect company to start doing every other year yeah would have been like there was nothing about the essential where i felt like an essential with a snapdragon 845 was necessary if you had kept because it launched with the 835 right i want to i want to say yeah it, it, it's it was okay. a few years back but yeah but but whichever soc it launched with we were right at that cusp of power and performance we're going every other year mm -hmm. would have been really exciting so like you launch with one storage configuration and one SOC, then you keep the SOC and you just change prices on storage. Yep. I desperately wished Essential had had been the company to give us more of a TikTok model in Android space, very much like what the iPhone does. They yep. don't, we don't get new phones, we get refreshes, endless, endless refreshes from Apple. You can still go buy an iPhone 6 today. It's called an iPhone SE 2022. It's almost <laughs> yeah. exactly the same phone. It, it's, um, it's, yeah, exactly. You know, I feel that we're overdue an Android company saying we're going to start a longer term commitment and a longer term manufacturing cycle. And then also our accessory partners will know we're going to be into this shell with this body for this number of years so that you can really get the best possible quality cases and mounts and attachments and not, and not force every every generational upgrade to change the case because you move the camera sensor a quarter of a an fraction, inch to the yeah. Yeah, just making it ever so small of a change so that you have to buy a whole new set of accessories which is weird because in theory if you think about it the companies that make these changes don't sell as much accessories as third party accessory companies do they may they may buy they may have licensing for like you know my fi or something like that for when it's accessories provide power but realistically for case manufacturers it doesn't really make a difference so reality you're right stick with the same design for a couple of years you know maybe introduce new color palettes or something like that but for the most part stick to the design and people will appreciate it more knowing that there is that consistency that's going to go kind of like a prius we go a couple of years, <laughs> two to three years with the same design on the well, Prius like before they car, shiver. Like the frame doesn't change because well, why like, would it's you like the Model 3. It looks the same car as the Model, you know, I'm saying the Model 3 has looked the same since it came out. You know, you can't really tell other than small accent in color differences that you could. It, and, it and is kind of funny though, like my mom has become one of those people. It's like, well, you can see that those door handles. Yeah. That was an option on this year, Tesla. Yeah, I know. It's like a, it's like a fine line. 
Yeah, that would, it's hilarious that, that, how much that, that, she's <laughs> in on 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 the car cult. You, you could she's taste, really digging it. You could taste the winery this was made in because the, no, I, I do the exact same thing. When we see cars passing by, I tell my wife, I was like, yep, that was uh, that was a 2020. That's an earlier generation than ours. Did you see that whole silver framing on that? Yeah, they took that out mm-hmm. with the 2021. They started with yeah, ours. So, so funny, you know that Chrome Delete. Um, Tesla does that. I'm, I'm, I'm that way. I'm 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 that way with classic vets. Like, okay, that's the ducktail, and then you can tell by the vents on the side that this model Stingray was that. Oh, there's there's like the '67, and they they yeah, cut yeah, out yeah. that crossbar from the '66. So yeah, I'm I'm totally I'm totally on board. I, it's just to me when when we look at what phones are. Yeah. And the the thing that like Carl Pay isn't wrong. Emotions sell more phones than oh, absolutely. practical yeah. the, considerations. The, fee, the need the to fit matters. in. Samsung feeds off of that every single day. What are you talking well, about? Well, and it's Apple's, you know, a huge part of their business Stick. model is bullying people that have green bubbles. Like bullying sells more phones. Mm-hmm. Um, the He's not incorrect. I oh. think the hardest thing he's going to run into, though, is this still feels primed as an enthusiast conversation. And that's too not... Much. It's not reaching other people. You know, it, it took a long time for OnePlus to gain any kind of idea with consumers that primarily buy their phones through carriers. And just as that happened, it seemed like that's when Carl Pay was sort of starting to get shoved out of the company. Well, that yeah, because there was no, it. yeah, you, you're, you were, uh, the product that you were creating was more, more of a, once you get in with the carriers, this is a weird conversation, but realistically, at the end of the day, when you get into the carriers, any OEMs that works with a carrier has to, not to say bow, but work to the demands of what the carriers need and what they're going mm-hmm. to sell on their shelf. So you can't necessarily, like, you know, getting a OnePlus that's not certified for Verizon, you know, it's not going to help for somebody on Verizon to be able to buy it if it's not certified because you you can't get the, you know, the UW and all of that good stuff if you if there is a version there. But, you know, carriers can specify what software is on the on the phone. So that has to change. When we saw OnePlus come into carriers, we lost the second SIM card. Uh, and yeah. then, of course, now OnePlus no longer sells second SIM card devices in the U.S. We only have single. But what, I'm, what I meant to say is, you're right. It, it's a very different. This is a much longer story. And how it starts and how the first generation is received is where the, the conversation is going to go. But like as you said, most people that are going to actually go spend their money, need like a uh, like I, w- I want to say like a, uh, uh, oh man, what a, a organic purchase, like somebody that really is falling, mm-hmm. not falling, but like going for the hype and really appreciating it. They're going to be one plus users. They're going to be <laughs> enthusiasts and people yeah. that always want to try first gen. And that's probably going to be like people that maybe you know run so, YouTube channels and so on. But here's here's tough. here's my problem though: is every single time we've played that game, it's yeah. kind of failed. It has. I mean, it works emotionally for a very small number of people. It, it it gets them excited that somehow they're a part of a secret club, and they yep. become those insufferable geeks that like. I remember those hate, days with one plus. I, I, I remember they, they the invite the, the, the invite system snobs and hey bud, can you but, send me an invite? Yeah. I, I know. Yeah, but but again, it, it it breeds a kind of enthusiast and fandom that mm-hmm. we don't like in music fans. <laughs> I liked Sorry. this band before they were cool. Mm-hmm. I liked this band before they sold out. That's what you create. Yeah. That 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 doesn't endear you to the broader community of of tech fans. It doesn't endear you to Apple and Samsung users, and it definitely doesn't break any mind share on general consumers, the people who buy their phones predominantly through carrier stores. Yeah. Um the 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 you know the the ter- the tides didn't really turn for OnePlus until they broke their T-Mobile deal. Mm-hmm. Because the OnePlus 6T suddenly started selling more units in the United States than any previous OnePlus. It was because people could walk in, poke at the phone. Up. It was a good phone, and then they could good buy it phone, yeah. in that store. Yeah, and it was great. So remember the Thunder I, again, but yeah. Just like Essential, I feel like Essential started this whole conversation in a very limited, we're going to be grassroots, we're going to appeal to Android enthusiasts, we're going to do something different because smartphones are boring. It's the same story, yeah, I know. It's the same story, and nothing is doing the same story, it's the same playbook, and it's never worked. You only find success when you can finally start finding, when you find a broader consumer base 
to attract. And you can't really do that in the United States without a poop ton of traditional marketing. I mean, so, I actually pitched them. A, I pitched Essential a series of advertisements. Mm -hmm. Stark white psych. Like literally like a featureless white void. And a guy comes out in, in you know, like sort of like a, a sweater. You know, something very like approachable and accessible, but professional looking. And he points out a feature on the phone and the tagline is, that's essential. Better battery life. That's essential. That's essential. You know, up to date software for better protection. That's essential. Like if you can't put the money on a series of campaigns that can run all year on traditional marketing in radio, on television and on billboards, you will be irrelevant to your average consumers so, and the enthusiasts are not mm -hmm. going to be evangelists. They're going to be the main people who tear your you. company down. Absolutely. Uh, sad, sad to say, but yeah, you're right. I think that's the biggest thing. And I think this is where I, I wonder if they have enough. And I don't want to turn into it, uh, you know, <laughs> a podcast on, on essential or on nothing. Um, the, uh, the way they're doing I actually it, the pitched the same story to LG. <laughs> when Essential passed on my campaign, I, I hit up LG campaign and like, life is good when you can do more at once. Dual screen phone. Life is good when you treat your ears and they show someone plugging in headphones and their world turns into color. You know, life is good when you get the shot showing off the cameras. But instead, that was the year they went with the, uh, um, it was the G7. Was it the uh, OK no, command? No, 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 no. It, was, take a no it was the V50. It was the year they went with the V50 zombie um zombie sweetheart commercial oh, we got like man. one commercial in the united states and it was like zombies taking a selfie or something weird like that and i was like i was so mad you're like this is a good pitch you know like i'm using your tagline it's brand awareness it's simple it focuses on something the phone does better than any of the competition yeah, yeah. like run an ad and instead we've got like joseph gordon levitt drumming on the subway and you're like lg and you're like i what was this a commercial for hipsters making travel more difficult in new york i don't it, understand it, it was uh yeah no i know that I, I i understand the feeling was the it was a very confused messaging uh they were never on brand that they were always focusing on things <laughs> that were or things I mean, that were, like it, literally any phone can do well, hey, that's what i was gonna say yeah it, it, absolutely any phone can do it right now i can <laughs> i can say that, just lit up on my desk that, that's why i didn't say the name i didn't want this <laughs> <laughs> guess guess what Guess which, which phone didn't turn on? <laughs> My V60. <laughs> LG is like, sorry, I don't. So do the that Honor anymore. kicked on, the OnePlus kicked on, the Vivo kicked on, the TCL kicked on, the Bond. Motorola. The case is closed, so it just lit up. Yeah, yeah. V60 sitting there, not taking a selfie. <laughs> the one company that made the commercial. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be better now. <laughs> I just. I just needed a second because the irony of that was so thick. <laughs> it it landed right on point. I mean, though, you, you'd you'd have to get it there, right? It would be the one that you're talking about was the one that doesn't do uh, it, and you're like. <sighs> and then I digress, and I. <laughs> Boy, howdy, have we digressed? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, uh, I feel like we're hitting our greatest hits here. Um, you, uh, for, for the videos and, and, and the content and the products that you've been, uh, kicking yeah. around, um, I feel like we still need to hear what the best of your week was. Cause right now I'm, I'm still waiting to see if my Peltier cooled, uh, game controller is going to last the remainder of our podcast here. I, so for me, the best of my week has been, it, it, so it's something I can't share yet. Maybe I'll say that part. Uh, there's a couple of things coming up, um, I got something early this morning, a, a, a good, uh, I heard something good this morning that kind of made me very excited about something that's coming up in the near future. I can't, that's like, a weird way to say it. Um, so it's, it's been a hit and miss mostly on work uh, as far as try, literally just trying to put things out. And yeah. um, I, after putting out the chair video and tank in it, and it's like super tanking, not like regular tanking. It's like super, it was sub 500 for like three to four days. It would, nobody cared about it. Um, that took me a little bit and I kind of took a few days off of not making video and then taking care of some things over the weekend. Um, I, 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 you know, it's, I'm, I'm trying to keep it positive. So 
I'm very happy that something came up this morning that made me a little bit more excited. So hopefully I'll be able to share some of that information in the near future. Um, I am looking forward though. I will say that once we are able to kind of work out the whole mechanics of, uh, today with the X70 Pro Plus, yeah. um, it, it, it's a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I've been, I've been waiting since January, so don't get me wrong. A couple <laughs> more weeks, two to three weeks with Scoop kind of enjoying it, getting it through the 4th of July, getting, getting some of that, kind, you know, cause I, so this is the other thing when you said, you know, Scoop, Vegas, 4th of July, it's going to be great. There's going to be so much more things he can cover there right. and enjoy it. And um, yeah, and then we'll get a chance to work that out. But so, uh, hope so one of Scoop's favorite things to do is also concert and uh, pro wrestling photography. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm dying to see what he does with that X70 Pro Plus, like Vegas lit stage, neon lights behind the scenes. Oh, absolutely, yeah, like, yeah. The the, the low light performance rush king that. phone. It's gonna be so, so good. The phone he has is literally the low light king that does nail low light with right color calibration, right color representation oh, yeah. of what the shot's supposed to be. So absolutely, I'm not in in many ways. I was saying is like I'm glad you're able to get uh, people to be able to experience it. The IQ for me was definitely very nice. I liked it, but I felt like the X70 Pro Plus did way more, and I and I liked that mm -hmm. they had similar things like the the, the fingerprint sensor, the yeah, ability of right. launching things from just by positioning a fingerprint on the left side or the, the right side. So um, it, it's. But the sensor size matters, and what Vivo is doing, I feel, is is demonstrating what the improved sensor can do. Yeah, better than many of their competitors. Like I don't feel you see you get the same stark difference on um, a Note Twenty Two. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that way about the Pro I. Yeah. Sony Pro I felt like a demonstrable difference in improvement over what an Xperia One Mark Three. Could, yes. could could achieve it's a it's a, it was a different um, it's a different direction also i felt like then the first pro the pro uh, the first sure. xperia pro i felt like but, the first pro the, was yeah oh sorry but I, but i was also just going to add to that like the original uh, like the pixel 6 pro at mm -hmm. launch i don't feel we saw as dominant a camera performance from the main sensor i was way more impressed with the improvements to the telephoto oh you know crazy, so yeah. when when you when you pick up that vivo um, when you pick up a Vivo X versus an IQ 9, you see a, a noticeable difference in camera performance between those two phones. And that's what's exciting is starting to see how we're showcasing those improvements to sensor size, sensor technology, and then also co-processor yep. technology. So yeah, I, 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 I'm happy to sort of spread the wealth here a little and just, you know, this Vivo is just going to make like a little kind of round trip. <laughs> come back it's like it's come, vivo's on tour and it'll be come, it'll be fun yeah it's it's touring it's touring the u.s and hitting hitting you know it'll, it'll be in your stake next uh no i um so that part is actually definitely i would say the best part of my week because even though it came in more like a last minute type of a thing it's definitely exciting and uh, michael pepper text like yeah, I, I love getting those emails that feeling it it, it to mm -hmm. me it's more about when they come out of the blue because i like you yeah. don't expect it and then something comes up so yeah, um that was fun it, it it's it's that type of experience and then i got a chance to share you know different types of tech different tech that i i enjoy mm -hmm. we did the the anchor battery i had another one from zendura that was the uh the i think the, the basically they're more the 600 series not the 1000 series they had two okay. different ones um so their super base m600 is actually very very nice it's like a power bank on crack it's it's not anchor level crack but it's kind of like <laughs> It sounds like I'm I'm back I'm pushing crack on everything. Like, it's it's a uh, it's strong enough. Yeah, but like in a bad way. No, 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 no. It, it's a good way. It's small, portable, flexible. Uh, not as many ports, which I would have wished they had a little bit more ports. But for what it does, for the size that it is, um, a 600 uh, series actually runs really nice, and the thousand is just literally longer and heavier because it needs more cells. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I was able to kind of share that and put that out because um, I had both of them at the same time. So there's some clips that you'll notice in there and they're in the same area, uh, like the same clip with the Goonies on the uh, on the Panasonic, uh, you know, the tough book uh, is, is in there. Uh, but honestly, I, uh, I, I've used both, but the, um, the super base, I, I find that it's easier to carry around because it's a lot lighter. And I like that about it. And where we built up the tent in the backyard, and my every weekend, and my son wants to play around and want to, you know, want to inflate the bed and turn on the fan and do stuff. Yeah. I take that in. I take, I give it to him. It lasts him all night. He could do whatever you want. That's great. Good. See, I love yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, no, and and it's it's good for uh, you know earthquake preparedness, and I I love this type of tech. So, 
Uh, I might have another video going out tomorrow that I've been working on with a company on. Uh, if I can get it approved, hopefully it'll be out tomorrow. Otherwise, um, I may have something coming up on Saturday. Like at, it'll be at the same time as the uh, the live stream. So, well, yeah. I mean, but it's those are little things going on through the lull and kind of getting things going on. But I, I, I didn't get a chance to kind of like you know, maybe flip back, back to you. What would you say is the best of your week at this point? Or, you know, is it? Uh, I, I had some more fun with some audio gear. I mean, I'm flush. I, I'm, I'm bouncing off of the Steam Deck. I did a video for reviews.org. Okay. talking about streaming gaming on the steam deck that's like so off brand for them but i pitched it and the guy was like yeah i heard those steam decks are really hot right now and you're like let's do a video <laughs> it's like now, it now i get to make my steam deck a tax write-off <laughs> you know like sure um so like right now i am crazy flush but again my my first love my first passion good audio and so uh for reviews um no for slick deals we're yes. going to be taking a look at the Steel Series. This is the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. That's a, yeah, it was it's, a, it's a title. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, yeah, a yeah. bunch of videos went out on this already. Um, I'm finally getting to kind of take a, a little turn on it. It's a really solid gaming headset, nice uh, drivers, a nice sort of slide out microphone. And it's wired, wireless, and Bluetooth with its own um, desktop oh. DAC. Nice. So a desktop DAC with dual USB inputs. So you have one button swapping. Like, let's say you've got a computer and a PlayStation on your desk. You just go and it pops it over like a KVM switch. Mm -hmm. But you can also use an audio mixer to go uh, wireless and Bluetooth and hear audio sources at the same time, routing the information to the headset. It's, that... it's a trip. Yes, there's, it's no. a, there's a lot going on. It, it, um, so this is now it's it's very expensive. This is a three hundred and fifty dollar headset. Steel Series is not messing around. This is in no. that like almost boutique tier. Um, like I've got my uh, Sennheisers. They're now Epos, the six seventies. I've got my Mobius from Odyssey. This is in that same ballpark in that same tier. But it's proving to be one of the most flexible multiple inputs, great cabled support. You can drive these very easily. Like I plug them into my Steam Deck directly off a cable. Steam Deck drove these perfectly nice. um, as just a standalone headset. And then you can connect them to a phone and then you can connect them to your computer and then you can connect it to a Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation and you can like route all of this audio with virtual 7.1 surround sound. I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, this is my first spin on a uh, Steel Series headset, mm -hmm. um, with only a couple minor concerns that I'll be sharing in the Slick Deals video that we're going to shoot next week. Um, other than a few minor concerns for that price point, I feel like they came to play, okay. and it's really exciting to see gaming hardware, gaming audio hardware being taken this generally seriously. Where mm -hmm. it's even like it just looks like good broadcast headset. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. look like some weird Mountain Dew fueled. You know, like it looks like something you'd see on like Sports Center. Heck, I'm right. here down on the 50 yard line. You know, like it just looks like looks a like, good. It, actually, it, it has a lot of uh, inspiration. For, it, it looks like a Bose actually on a certain angle. Yeah, like a little bit. With the right? band at the top. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah that, that band at the top, that's what got me. So, yeah, the elastic band. Exactly. Look at that. Oh, it's a removable mic, too. Oh, no, it slides. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, this is what I love. It's, it's, yoink. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> it coils, and then coils that's the bendy the, arm yeah, that, yeah. that slides all around. Um, like so, yes, uh, Bluetooth 2.4 low latency wireless, 3.5 millimeter, and um, hot swappable batteries. Interesting. 2.4 gig is the low lat lat latency. Okay, okay. okay. Most, most of your proprietary dongle headphones are 2.4 gig. Okay. Um, but it also, oops, wrong side, is hot swappable battery. And the battery charges in in the DAC. Nice. So you get okay. two batteries when you buy it. Each battery with active noise canceling on can last for around 20 hours. And so when you're you know sort of starting to run low, you just pop the battery out, pull oh the one God. from the DAC, swap it right back in again, and you're you're good to go. My Logitech for another X 20 Pro hours. Wireless. Yeah, that that is literally my number one problem on the, the Logitech X Pro wireless ones run really nice. They run for an extended yeah, amount of time. Run great. 
But when they but, go low. But if you go low latency, you're talking no, about like maybe 10 hours of runtime total. Well, what, I, what I meant is when the battery goes low and I'm like, crap, I'm in the middle of an edit. I got to use speakers now. Or I got to jump over and bring in a wire solution or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. a whole bunch of different things going on. Um, I, having I, hot swappable I, batteries, like, ex, like actual swapping you know batteries. You know what would be really cool is that like if we could come up with a way to swap the batteries in our phones. Wouldn't no. that be amazing? You think? People would like that though. I just like, like how fast, you know, like people say like, oh, I, I'm so worried about fast charging, but what if you didn't need to like charge your phone? You could just replace swap the, battery. the battery. Like you could go to a hundred in less than one minute. Well, like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, all you have to turn it off, swap the battery, put it back in. And it's, then yeah, that's just, how people used to do it. it. <laughs> You'll have, we'll give, we'll make the belt accessory. Well, TK, that's belts. the joke. You can't just say people used to do it because then it gives up know, like we I didn't know. know that it existed. Batman used to, no, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> see? Like we need to do like improv. It's yes and, and then you keep yeah. the thing going. We, we got to keep. Okay, I do apologize. I meant to say, you know, this is how the future is going to be. I think that's what so nothing two is things, bring us. Two things before we go. Um, I'm going to share here something on my screen real quick because sure. uh, in the chat right now we've got Michael Pepper Tech, and he is apparently really enjoying his Vivo. And actually, here let me do something real quick so I don't show off a bunch of browser tabs. Um, but I'm going to share the screen. He took this photo from his x80 pro and nice. i would say that's a pretty stunning example of mobile phone photography with some gorgeous depth of field and some very good uh close focus performance on some tiny little flowers so Daisy's very here. well done michael pepper tech um i'm very again i i feel like this is a really fun uh phone to shoot on and i'm always going to be a sucker for a good flower macro because that's my zen hobby like mm -hmm. if I don't roll around in the dirt every couple of days to get a close up photo of a snail shell, then uh, I start to get real itchy. But um, while while you start wrapping us up, I'm gonna head back over to my desk and get that uh, game, sir. Oh, so, that's right. Yeah, so we um, get the uh, if, final if, verdict. If you on remember, that we've got a number of people still streaming like throughout the week. If you can give them just a bit of a plug, I'm gonna be over no, here real quick. absolutely. So, if, if you realistically with everything going on and all the tech that we have, obviously. The 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 main focus that's going on in the next couple of couple of days or so is just what what is the tech that you're using and what you're going to be able to do with it. We saw with the X80 Pro what we're able to do with photography. Uh, we'll be able to obviously see uh, you know Michael Pepper Tech and uh, everybody gangs in there. Simon says if no, um, you know Farhan's in there as well, kicking it with us, and Juan's going to give us the verdict on the battery. But uh, keep in mind, there's going to be more conversations. There's other shows going on. You know, uh, I didn't I didn't see Tech Kill Every Mama today, but you know, obviously, make sure you check out all the other content that's going on. There's literally a, almost like a stream every day of the week if mm -hmm. you want to kind of be able to. And there's actually some that are doubling okay. up. So but let's 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 break them down. So today sure. was uh, Tech King Mike, yep. Mike talks tech, and us. And us. Um, tomorrow is Lashawn. So that's Lashawn's all right, boy. boy. You're on Saturday. Saturday morning and um, also and Android, uh, Bay. Android Bay and then Roger Bot is also doing Saturdays as well. Oh, that's right, Roger. So thank you. Roger switch um, over to Saturday, yeah. Life, hey, no, switch life of Tech? He's Life of Tech, but yeah, on Twitch, life he's Roger Bot, yeah. Um, and uh, then... Uh, Sunday, there's... The, uh, Sunday purposely... should be El Jefe Reviews. This, so there's El Jefe and there's also the purposely, uh, the Pixel Line, the Sam oh, and, that's uh, right. Joe, Sam Sa and Joe. Sam and Joe. Yeah. Um, I'm on Monday and then, uh, tech for your needs is also I think Monday afternoon. Kimmy yep. is Tuesday. So that's gadget goddess. Gadget goddess. And yep. then Wednesday is Eric at easy computer solutions. So we've got a really great roundup. So, there's, there's okay. Massive one. Yeah. So 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, you can see like the condensation. Oh, like yeah. I just touched yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. pad and it got real cool. It's, it's about 82 degrees in my office right now. Because even with the AC running, I've got all of like my lights and the PC oh, was, running, and it gets it. really, yeah. really hot in here. Um, the pad is down to forty-six degrees, nice. which is pretty good. Yeah, that's not Ar bad. Ar Ar Arctic, yeah. So um, I'm going to unplug the battery. The back of the battery was at close to my ambient room temperature, and now the back of the battery is at ninety-eight degrees. So the back of the battery is, I don't know, like 15 degrees warmer than yeah. the rest of my room. Um, and we went from uh, 6,000 charge. 
So what is this? One, two, three, four, five. This is a five light battery. So 20% each light. And we're down to the last two lights. Whoa. So we were on for about a half hour. It, it actually, but, uh, 40 minutes, roughly 40. I think we, we well, I plugged it in at, I plugged it in at 910. Oh, okay. So, you're, so okay, a little, yeah, almost 40 minutes. Over, yeah, almost 40 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So that's a lot. Yeah, imagine having that kind of battery experience if you're trying to just run a couple of games or, you know, a good match of PUBG or even, uh, you know, Fortnite or anything like that. So the power draw of a thermoelectric cooler is a lot different than a gaming controller that can kind of trickle charge your phone or a clip-on fan. Um, the power draw is going to add 15 degrees to your grips. Mm -hmm. If you can engineer grips that can handle a sliding shell and you'd need a bigger than 6,000 milliamp hour battery to get more than an hour gameplay <laughs> out of just the fan. Can, te techno, yeah, just he's, he's the fan. Right. Yeah, exactly. He's like, you need a 20,000 milliamp here just for the fan. Uh, no, I, and that's true. That's exactly and, what and that, you need to kind of... And that means you can't charge your phone off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was very surprised the way the the cooler was on the on the uh, on the uh, Red Magic 7 was doing because my battery seriously it tanked in 40 minutes. I could mm -hmm. not there was it was 100 and it was at down to 25% 35 to 30% and I was like, "Oh crap, I got to stop." It was not sustainable. I couldn't. I don't think I could have finished another match. So for me, at that point, that's when I started. Fed, like it. So the solution is to charge to run the phone on HS power. Or, sorry, power separation. Sorry, I keep confusing Sony and uh, yeah. Red Magic, and run the fan out of an external power, and then I was able to get the best experience. And I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. So solving the problem by either adding battery into the grips or using the internal systems battery is non-sustainable because it's not designed that way. The phone wasn't mm -hmm. designed to be a sort. I mean, it will provide the power because you it, some devices will support it. But by design, that's not the function of way, the way it was supposed to be. And you do need external. And like the, your solution, the, the 6,000 or even a, like a, a, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of 6,000 easy to last you through an hour. Yeah. So if you want to do that, absolutely. Uh, but if you're running it and running the phone at the same time, I'm pretty sure we would have killed that one faster than than what we would have done here. So just again, even, even just running it on for just the cooler, for yeah. just the yeah. thermal electric cooler, you would need to be able to engineer a product yeah, yeah. to a much higher specification with internal cabling that the current, the, doesn't. This, <laughs> this doesn't need to support any internal cabling, so the arms don't need to incorporate all of that. Those arms would need to be stiffer because the grips would be heavier. So already you're, you're talking about significantly increasing the manufacturing costs of just how the unit is constructed. Yeah then adding the batteries, then adding all the charge circuitry, because you've mm -hmm. got to be able to route power. So how do you route power throughout both grips unless you have plugs on each grip? Yep. So the cables have to go through the cooler. So already you've made the cooler assembly more, more delicate and more complicated. And the wires also and, generate heat as well. It's not just the, uh, the yeah, batteries the, the themselves. Entire thing, the, the entire thing now becomes electrically warm because we know that there's never a perfect transfer of power and then from there <laughs> you've got to have the extra cabling to charge the phone through another cable port if you're not charging the batteries and you're not charging the phone like you've got yeah. to be able to plug one in and then also plug in the other adding all of that weight i do not believe you can magically make that product a gamesir x3 with a battery inside of it I don't think you can make that unless you significantly increase the price. And then you're going to tell people, well, the most the fan can run on the go is maybe about an hour if you're, you know, sort of in an ambient temperature around 75 to 80 degrees. Yeah. Like, I don't feel someone's going to pick this up and go, you know what I really want? is I really want this controller to be twice as expensive, but I can use it for about an hour about away from an hour. the charger. And, it, and it'll hour generate a lot table. of heat for me. Yeah, and I know, I'm with you. And I think that's the thing. But I, I love the fact that we were, you were able to easily prove that, even just for the fact that we were running a 6K battery bank down to 20%, to basically about, no, not 20, about 40% about run. Yeah. yeah, 30 to 40% capacity on in, in about 40 minutes on a fan that, and you weren't even using it for the charge the phone. You were just using it for the fan. So the yep. reality is, and 
like and and the battery got hot oh oh yeah that <laughs> top, top of the fact that, that the cool that, that's a battery the phone it's not cooling the grips getting and... drained that's not a battery just sort of charching a phone and then it's it's good once you've like topped I said, it off for if a couple you had minutes. them in the grips the grips could get warm your arms are going to start sweating that experience starts becoming uncomfortable it's not as, as i think like and in, it's heavier and yeah, it, wishful thinking will always kind of be like, well, I wish, I wish, I wish. You have to kind of also understand some mechanics from using different devices. And I think that's where it helps. We've used enough controllers and, and gaming experiences. So I, I'm, I'm not conflicted because this is the same thing I love about HS power control. If, yeah. if I fire up HS power control, it's because I know I'm going to be sitting to play a game for a bit. Yeah. And if I've got a power bank and a backpack and I can kind of offset some of that drain without having to plug in, great. I can do the same thing on the game, sir. It, it doesn't really bother me that it's only a controller when I'm away from an outlet, because when I'm away from an outlet, I'm not going to be gaming really heavy. It, it's a you. very momentary kind of gaming experience. And honestly, I might not even put it into a controller if I'm only going to be gaming for such a short period of time. No, so no, when exactly. I know I want to sit down and really get into something, you know, it's the same thing like with my Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. Very regularly, I'm sitting on the couch with my Steam Deck with it plugged in. <laughs> you know, like that's kind of the beauty of something Having portable. Done. I can run it for a little while off of a charger, or I can get a great experience also sitting, knowing I'm going to be hanging out for a bit, and I can plug it in and really get into a round of Tetris or a half hour of Vampire Survivors or something like that. You know, there's a new... Um, it's a Grim Knight Heroes Survivors. If okay. you like that that Vampire Survivors kind of gameplay, you run around and then just waves of enemies come come hitting you. Um, check out Grim Knight Heroes Survivors. Okay, it's a really good Android clone of Vampire Survivors with better animation. Like your character actually like swings Slices. their weapon as opposed to the weapon just sort of appearing next to them. Um, it's vertical, so it's a portrait interface, so you can play it totally one-handed, and it's built on that same mechanic. You run around, swarms of enemies are attacking you. It's totally free to try. It's only a dollar to remove ads. Okay. So nice. again, Vampire Survivors is only like a $3 game because it's in beta or whatever, but but Grim Knight is, is a game that I think is also, it's very similar. And it's a very easy purchase to recommend. I mean, it's a buck, and you can sit there and just burn time. Absolutely. Uh, killing swarms and swarms and swarms of enemies. I like it. Um, before we let everybody go, what uh, what can we expect from you for the rest of the week? Is there anything coming up? Uh, I know it's obviously Thursday. There's like a couple of days left. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be something um, uh, maybe I spent Patreon all uh, related? day writing. Um, I've got to shoot. So I'm going to be shooting some tomorrow, which means that it's going to take me a little bit to edit for okay. the Patreon early next week. I'm hoping by, say, Tuesday, okay. um, I'll have the audio deep dive on the Steam Deck out. So I got nice. the Xperia 1 Mark IV. I didn't mm -hmm. call it Versus a review, the... but just sharing some thoughts on the audio performance. Uh, this week we got the, I did a showdown. It was the Poco F4 versus the Red Magic 7 Pro. Yep, and really comparing the speaker performance and the headphone performance between those two. And then I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. Steam Deck versus some of our favorite phones. You know, like, what do these speakers really sound like? And they, and how much of a win do they get just for the fact that they're pointed at your face and not out the sides? Mm -hmm. It's just nice that they're, they're like bottom, they're, they're center, they're, they're, they're set up lower, so your hands are on the top of the Steam Deck controlling all the buttons. Mm -hmm. And then there are two speakers right by the screen that sort of shoot up into your face. Yeah. And so Direction. even though you can find some phones that are louder, just pointing them in the right direction. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's having them louder pointing difference. in the wrong direction and having to use echo or bouncing audio uh, right. off your hand. It, it's this is where I uh, yeah, no, Sony does that very, very well also with the front facing speakers. And, and I think it's the one Mark IV did a very good upgrade. But I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, facing them in the right direction literally solves half of your problem because uh, you don't have to go this loud to compensate for the dis for the difference. So, in yeah. direction. That, that's going to be, I think, the, the, the first thing coming back up. Um, okay. Just just as I sort of get reset, because I've I've got a I, I I've got the Mini Air 11 um, from Geekom, oh, and okay, I also good. have a NOS 
uh, that I'm going to be tearing into soon here, too. Good thing that I wore pants. I didn't know I'd be standing up this much. That's why I told so you to put them back on, man. I know, man. You were you were spot on. <laughs> so another little mini PC. So we're going to be nice. doing another build on this. Um, this is a lower one. power uh, PC than the... I forget what the name of the Mini 8 is. But this is a little bit more of a kind of like a thin client. It's a little more like the Azul's. Okay. So Good. nice, yeah. just little low power PC. And then I'm finally building this out. Oops, I got tape stuck to the bottom. And this is the QNAP TS233. So this is a two bay NOS. Nice. Um, I, love, I love my QNAP. QNAP. Mine runs pretty nice. I have my four bay. Yeah, I, I, love, I love my three bay. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a really simple box, a really simple setup. The build on this was super easy. It's like one screw on the bottom and then drive <laughs> cages that are just brilliantly easy to set up. Nice. So I'm going to be doing um, a video on setting this up. And then I'm going to be sending this to my mom. And nice. it's my mom is long overdue. Their backup strategy right now is just an old beat up hard drive that they plug into their Mac. I was and like, I think, I think we can do a bit better than that for all the photos that are on your phones that I'm sure you're not backing up because your phones don't talk to your I, Mac. We, we've been stung by that. Yeah, no, please, please make sure you do that. So for sure. Um, for me, it's pretty much going to be that one video that I was talking to you guys. I'm working with the company, hopefully tomorrow, maybe Saturday. Um, but I will, once I'm done with this one, this is going to be my, then I'm done with this wave of things at my backup and I can focus on the, uh, magic, red magic, uh, not the red magic, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, magic four, uh, from Otter to be able to focus on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we've Along said with Simon says hypno, um, yeah. I have almost exclusively nice things to say about this phone. Yeah, it's refreshing, very nice look, overdue look again at a, at a brand that we both enjoyed very, very much. And I cannot wait for hopefully in the future with, with their new direction and everything going on, then we may, be able to, we, may be, we may be able to see them come back to Amazon US or something like that. That would mm -hmm. be great. That would be amazing, especially for their X series. That was always like one of their top sellers. Uh, people were buying them like hotcakes around the, like Christmas and so on. So for sure. So, and Scoop um, says, "Hey, Scoop, you were saying nice things about you. You missed a whole bunch of people complimenting you as a photographer. So you've got to absolutely. go back and listen to the replay." Yes, definitely. Um, so, with that <laughs> being said, I will say first and foremost, thank you very much. Thank you, Juan, for hanging out with us again on a beautiful Thursday evening. Uh, for everybody kicking it with us, Simon, Michael, Gangs, uh, Scoop, kicking it with us as well. Uh, we got uh, Farhan's in there as well. Gabuleta's in there, and everybody taking their time to spend their evening or their. It could, it could be their evening, could be their morning, depending where you are. Um, hope you do well. Hope you be well and stay well. And we'll see you guys hopefully uh, in new, uh, obviously next week for another episode. Um, I'll see you guys Saturday morning with the Android Bay, and of course Monday morning with the SGGQA, uh, Mister SGG right next to us right here. Uh, and of course I'll see you guys in the chat. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.